Here we go. Hashtag Cancel Corner, episode nine. Mr. Juan Castro, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, actually. Awesome, man. Mm. All right, well, let's start with a uh, bit of your history, where you're from, what you do when you're not kung fu and that kind of stuff. Uh, um, I, I guess I, I was born in uh, Colombia um, and came here when I was around 13. Okay, cool. Yeah, and uh, been causing trouble ever since. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, I know, but um, yeah, I don't know. I just... Uh, always been really interested in challenging thought and like exploring thought in different avenues. Um, so it's led me to um, study uh, art and sculpture at one point in my life. Um, and then uh, after I got kicked out of art school, um, <laughs> I, I uh, studied psychology and got a okay a bachelor's in psychology with a minor in philosophy. Oh, nice. Um, Because, yeah, I wanted to go into philosophy, but, like, what does a philosopher do? What does he get paid for, right? Yeah. It's part of the the thought process. Um, Kind of a professional bullshitter, in a sense. (laughs) Yeah, well, I wanted to perfect that, Yeah. you know? Like, so that people... Like, I could be like, yo, I'm not crazy. Look, I know why I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah. I have a degree in psychology. <laughs> yeah, I can totally talk my way out of this. <laughs> yeah. In a way, in a way, yeah. yeah. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, I've always liked to push the boundaries also a little bit, which is why I got kicked out of art school. But, I mean, um, that's that's honestly a weird one because you would think art school would be exactly the place where you'd be able to express yourself and... I'm not going to ask the details of why you got kicked out or anything, but it's, mm. you'd think that's the point of expression, the point of art in general. Like, yeah, <laughs> no, it was surprising to me sometimes even like the students themselves uh, would set limits for themselves. Hmm. Yeah, we like, because first year you get the choice of doing half uh, fine arts and half design so you can see which side you want to going to oh okay so if you want to be more like an architect for physical construction or as opposed to more yeah like, or graphic artistic design direction or, or photography or video anything that has to be with you know a more structured side of art where you, you are given a problem by your client and you solve their problem creatively oh, okay. uh, the fine art side is you come up with the problem you solve it and you express it Oh, yeah. right. That makes better sense, actually. Yeah, it's a way better and, and I love the way that, like, an instructor explained it to us, like, in that first year that it worked like that. And, uh, but the interesting thing was, um, I was, I felt very confined in graphic design, like, the, the design part of, right. uh, you know, creative expression, uh, because I would be told, this is great. However, but, 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 and I was told that in philosophy as well, which is really interesting because yeah. I would have my instructors be like, this is great, but it's not what we asked you. So it was that same kind of restraint. Mm-hmm. Um, and so what was then interesting on the opposite side was that we were given complete freedom. And sometimes when we were given the most freedom, the students themselves would be like, wait, what are we supposed to do? Like, Oh, they had like, too much freedom. And like start to complain about it. Like, shouldn't we get like some sort of framework? Like, uh, you know, and, and things along that line, right? That yeah. like made me kind of be like, wow, like I thought that's what we all wanted in a sense. Yeah. And now we're getting it and you're not. Well, not freedom, it in. freedom is good good for lots of stuff but you can also be too free Mm -hmm. is the other part which i i kind of understand with the idea of well i mean like the well like they say in the states i mean it's free market system or free capitalism Mm. sort of thing like that but it's like you're also free to starve to death too so yeah Yeah, no and and the idea of freedom like when when you try and actually like explore it deep enough like yeah that that sense of um like what am I supposed to do? I need some structure. It is coming from a place of disempowerment. Like like you don't feel capable of handing that much options in a sense, right? And it's yeah. it's the same thing that happens when people question, well, can we function without capitalism? 
can we function with an, uh, without an economy? Yeah. Everyone's like, nah, people would just, but it's because people are coming from a place of disempowerment where they're like freaking out when they get too much freedom instead of communicating, instead of yeah. trying to find understanding, trying to find, you know, how can we serve each other yeah. in, in, in a way that provides value for both of our lives. And maybe not just, because that's the thing that happens naturally through business, but there's the economy, which is the artificial part of it. Yes and no, I, th I think, because money is a big driver to make people do things for one. Mm. But if we didn't have money per se, there's like, say where everybody's free to do whatever they want. Well, the example I always, I was told from a friend is like, well, maybe somebody wants to make artisanal bread. Mm. Okay, well then all of a sudden there's 200 people on on every other street that ha that are making artisanal bread. Mm -hmm. How much bread are you going to sell at that point then? Mm -hmm. Right. So it it the market kind of helps regulate and go where we actually need certain things is mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, and that's the thing. Like the um, there, I don't think that like like there's such a thing as like complete freedom in in a physical sense. Yeah. In a spiritual sense, we can access way more freedom than physically. Oh, for sure, but yeah. but in, in reality, even even in that art class, for example, even though we were given no boundaries, I'm still bound by physical reality. You know, I'm I'm still gonna be found by some sort of canvas or structural thing through the materials that I may choose, even if I choose to make a sculpture. Yeah. Right. Um. So it's almost unavoidable to to deny that like structure is needed in order to create something beautiful and perhaps, you know, efficient in some sort of way, you know, yeah. when going outside of the realm of art, right? Yeah. Well, that makes sense too, because if you want to build a physical structure, like we're downtown now, mm -hmm. all of these buildings have to be built a certain way because of gravity, mm -hmm. but you can use way cooler looking designs and put that into like a CGI Disney film or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, cool, because like, it's not actually really going to be built. It's it's physics don't really matter now so it can mm -hmm. it can be ridiculous mm -hmm. but looks super cool at the same time and for them it would work mm -hmm. but yeah when you when we come to reality it's like certain things need to have a certain level of boundary that you yeah, have to be a part yeah. of yeah and so and so i think that like the the disempowerment comes from like people not believing that they themselves can create enough structure uh to to sustain and, and manage resources yeah. without like a, an economic system, at least like we know it now, because we are so caught up in, in what we've got right now that we, we're not even looking at options necessarily. Um, and like, we're kind of starting to be forced to do that. And that's why, for example, in Canada right now, the guaranteed livable income is in like its fourth or fifth reading in parliament. Yeah. Um, because, it's not working. Like people in minimum wage in a first world country can't afford to live. They can afford to struggle. <laughs> yeah. But you know. Well, that's what they say. Like North America in general is one of the most expensive places to be poor. Mm. <laughs> and it makes sense too because like if you want anything, you have to get it yourself, and that's again where the problem of freedom comes in. It's because there is there are some social programs, but even then, if you don't know where to go or who to talk to about them, you're free to to have a different level of failure, sort of thing, too, right? Yeah. And that's that's the other part is where more socialist and more communist kind of things will take care of you, but it's like your bare minimum is that, and things you can't excel past that very far either. A yeah. Lot of times, so it's like both of them are good in their own way, but they're all they both have their own pitfalls too, right? Yeah, I think that that this uh, labeling of of uh well like the, the party system that's uh, the worst part of it i agree <laughs> like uh like way of thinking like paradigm is is kind of like it limits solutions a lot yeah it limits solutions a lot well especially when at least 60 um, percent of the population in any country demographic whatever kind of sit in the middle exactly yeah and right? it's just so yeah so so without um, affiliate like political affiliations I feel like for example this would be a way to not necessarily abolish structure yeah. but still 
like transform in a way that could help, you know, yeah, uh, get rid of biases, for example, yeah, because through the party system, biases are easily like um, shaped and manipulated through propaganda and like yeah. uh, things that help get one party more votes or you know the other party more votes, and it's always going to be influenced through the corporations that make donations. Yeah. Um, well, not only that, so, I mean, every politician stands on a platform talking about all these things. I'm going to change this and I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah. Not any of them do everything they say. And partly because they can't for some of it. Yeah, where, where so, we could be focusing more on, like, actual solutions. Yeah. Um, like, for, for a real long time, we've known that education needs an upgrade. Um, Hugely. There's, yeah. there's been experts talking about it for years. There have been tech talks um, and nothing has changed. Yeah. And it's in a way because... It's easier for people that are misinformed, um, disempowered, uh, have low self-esteem, low self-images, unhealthy relationships to be moved by the outside world. Anything that promises them some sort of safety, some sort of uh, compensation, some sort of... And that's what they base political you know, like campaigns on. Yeah. I'm going to get you that safety i'm gonna get you that compensation yeah right but they still have to cater to the the majority where kind of everybody again is in the middle and they take care of those yeah. people it's like they they get they get that platform to get elected but yeah i think and i it's... think the, the middle is is uh, like uh they kind of sell themselves short yeah because there's a lot more people i feel like in the middle that have completely been uh you know taking out of the illusion that it works. Yeah. Well, the thing is, too, um, is the middle class runs the world, at least in the industrialized world anyways, mm -hmm. because poor people don't have enough money to really affect change, and there's less of them than the middle class, and the ultra-rich, or even just, well, the rich in general, mm -hmm. that are their money kind of stays in their own circles. It doesn't actually go to the economy, per se, because every time they have some level of profit. It's tucked away offshore somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it kind of just stays in their own small circles. But, well, like like most of the, the taxes or the rules that they put, like carbon tax, well, it's an end, end user tax. It's like, well, why aren't the corporate world being taxed for that or yeah. changed or forced to do other things? Yeah. But it's and like, no, no, be, you drive the a car. Ones. They yeah. should be the ones that, the only ones, may perhaps, you know, yeah. that should be getting taxed for yeah. that. And it's like, if we can't do that, then give us more options where we can do that. Yeah. Right. And it's yeah, like, but it's it's because the government is not set up to actually help people. Like this has been known for ages. Yeah. Plato himself, like you know, he made that that famous list of the worst types of government, and democracy fell in one of them. Yeah. And especially because this isn't actually democracy. No, it's an illusion of democracy. It's an, it's an <laughs> illusion of democracy, but in reality, it's yeah. like very well disguised populism. Yeah. Well, it's. Um, yeah, and that's what I keep telling, talking to people about too, about the whole idea of we're not really that different from kings and queens from a thousand years ago. Yeah. We're just more of like a, a corporate oligarchy now. Yeah. Where the corporate world runs kind of everything because they have the money and power to do so, for one. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is too is that the politicians are there to change and make rules for the corporate world, not for the people. Yeah. So yeah, I'm totally on the same page with you as that one because we're just numbers. Yeah. And again, anytime people think that life is important, uh -huh. and it is to the individual, yeah. but business-wise, you're just a number. And if you're not an efficient number, you're out. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> and, and so one of the things that I've noticed in the past few years, especially with COVID, is that consciousness has a way of expanding naturally. Mm. Um, and, and it was expanding at such a rate. Like, there's been a few moments in... in the past 10 years, 10 maybe, 10 to 15 years maybe, uh, where consciousness has like had a moment of breakthrough where like people have united, like the Occupy movement yeah. was one of them. People now for, have forgotten. You like talk to some people and they're like, what, what? Don't, don't you remember like when people camped out to help cor corporations yeah. like, you know, accountable for a bunch of things that they should be accountable for? Yeah. And, and they're like, oh yeah. But they've forgotten because they like got completely pushed to the side. They they figure out a way how to make it look like, you know, like it was just a well, pipe dream or like. Part of that I think though too is the 
the people that didn't really understand the message and they kind of ruined what the the point of the protest was. Is so the other part of it? So that's what I'm going to get to because, okay, yeah. <laughs> because uh, uh, in 2019 there was another spark of con- like huge movement of consciousness where like that Greta girl from Europe, yep. the young one that started the Fridays for uh, for the Future movement. Yep. Um, Greta Thunberg. Bil- yeah, billions of people. Um, gathered together uh, to hold governments once again accountable for what they should be doing which is serving people and the people were speaking this is what we want yeah. you know governments everywhere like that were get, being held accountable by this huge movement of consciousness unified and what happened a few months after COVID got released so there's always been and, and now people that I knew were unified through that movement don't even speak to each other anymore. Yeah. Because of the opinions and the perspectives that came out of opposing sides. Yeah. You know, so one of the first things that I, I questioned, like when it first started to happen was like, what is truth? And that's, that's exactly what they want. Yeah. What it's that whole smoke and mirrors thing. And every time the collective consciousness, like you say, is get, gets together. Yeah. There's a way that it's, it's taken down and yeah, history is constantly repeating itself. Yeah, like yeah. we've had well AIDS pandemic you know that's pitting basically homosexuals against the rest of the world oh only gays get it, get AIDS mm. right misinformation mm-hmm. a lot of people are being split by whatever artificial lines that we draw a lot of the time mm-hmm. you know and then it was before that it was you know well actually right around the same time there was a huge cocaine and crack problem mm-hmm. being pushed through a lot of North America mm-hmm. we had to deal with that you know, there's a big war on drugs at the same time in 1980. It's like, well, but you guys are the ones that are bringing in the drugs. So what's yeah. going on here? Because you and I didn't buy the drugs. I mean, granted, neither of us were alive in 1980. But <laughs> but at the same time, it's like it wasn't the people. That stuff had to be shipped in from somewhere. Yeah. You know, and then before that, I mean, well, yeah, it was 80, right around 1980 when John Lennon, somebody that was, you know, a good proponent of togetherness, global yeah. consciousness, gets shot in the back. By who? Somebody that was an extremist that they basically just had to kind of point in a direction. Yeah. Oh, we didn't do that. Exactly. You yeah. know, before that, it was the, the, the whole peace movement. And, and it's uh, always someone else's fault, right? And yeah. Because that's, that's the, they're always ahead. Like, there's documents that have, show that the Rockefeller Foundations yeah. have, had, had prepared for a pandemic and just the way that it happened. They funded a lot of the COVID research. Yeah. And they're one of the biggest influencers of like politics behind the scenes where they, they can be far enough that they're like, Oh, that wasn't me. Yeah. But they own everything. So it's yeah. like, it all, and that's just one of them, you know, <laughs> like, and that they're the ones yeah. that get the most shit for it. Um, but it's also like a massive faceless empire Yeah. where you can't point a finger at anybody exactly. in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the government. It's like, everybody's pointing the finger at Trudeau, but it's like, he's not the one that calls you at, you know, four o'clock and it's like, you owe us 20 grand. It's like, who is this? What are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so I, I find that like right now, um, people, I, I feel just through the conversations that I've been having more and more that even though consciousness was like stunted by the pandemic, by it, there's only one way to, to keep going with consciousness. It's, it's, it's natural for it to, to want to expand and we've seen yep. it through the development of our society, you know, yep. as soon as we, we decided we can do more, we started to do more. And like this cameras, you know, like the, the amount of technology that we have right now, yep. and it's not even half of what we could be experiencing, but it benefits certain people to have society set up a certain way so that they can continue to, live in paradise which is what's meant to be here for all of us yeah well like usual it's something as big as the internet it's like well we can't control or we can't stop this but we can control it and guide it in certain ways mm. right so they use technology to yeah. uh, to keep us separated even though we do a great job of well dropping boundaries dropping in artificial borders artificial artificial is the word that's been coming up late right because like, it's lately. and that's what it is I mean yeah. you, you look at pictures from satellites and from the international space station there's no lines in the ground you know we've yeah. we've we've given power to things that don't exist 
Yeah. You know, because, you know, this person believes in a certain type of God, they're different than me, so that means they're wrong and I'm right. It's like, well, that's not true either because just because somebody has a different opinion doesn't mean they're wrong. And just because, and maybe if they are wrong about something, doesn't yeah. automatically make the other person right. Yeah, no. And, and so this, <laughs> this conversation of like artificial uh, reality and natural reality, that's, that's what's been becoming kind of like uh, a very simple way of explaining uh, what is real and what is not. Yeah. You know, and what is um, true and what is not because then you can just say well is that part of the natural laws yeah. or is that something that we've created and that we can transform because we've created you know yeah. um, and so so yeah like one of the things that has been like coming up a lot is that um, scarcity is artificial yeah they're already talking about six months down the road how we're going to have shortages the, the well then no the thing is like <laughs> what, what i mean this is what i mean so so in the the natural state of this this earth yeah is abundance yeah um Life we, thrives. we we have way more food that is out on shelves that is out trying to be sold than is consumed yeah and yet we have people dying of hunger yeah so so it is a a lot like scarcity is not a lot those people should not be dying technically if yeah. we just look at the factors like the most basic factors right void of any artificial reality that we've created as a humanity to help us run things yeah you know well they a lot of people are pointing the finger at billionaires or whatever it's like well they could solve world hunger it's like okay but what about the governments that we pay money to constantly mm -hmm. shouldn't they be taking care of people yeah. Don't we give them all of our money? Well, and that's the thing, because like, they, they're serving the, the <laughs> rich people, the corporations, instead of serving the people. And that's what they're scared of the most right now. And that's why yeah. they're working on trying to pass another online uh, like censoring bill, even though they already like passed an online hate speech bill yeah. that took care of all the things that were coming out of the residential school and the children. That's why we don't hear about it anymore. Yeah. Because a lot of people were speaking a kind of rhetoric that was very passionate. It's very hard to not vilify and um, come yeah. off as hate, hateful in your rhetoric in that kind of context. Yeah. So of course, the algorithm is going to be like, no, sorry, hate speech. Yeah. And now we don't know about the thousands and thousands of children that are being found for a reason. Because now they they can pump a lot more like clickbait things you know like things that will keep people on their screens scrolling yeah. in some sort of way yeah and um well and again it's with a whole smoke and mirrors kind of thing like that it's like oh well this is the what the catholic church and the government it's like oh yeah but uh, did you hear elon musk is looking to buy twitter oh what 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 yeah. you know like all this other bs that i mean that's not the timeline doesn't work out for that analogy pro properly but it's that idea though is that it's always don't worry about wording. Look over here. Yeah, exactly. You know? And yeah. it's and and every time every time I think of that, there's a problem that it seems apparent. More often than not, follow the money because it's almost always the rich versus the poor. Yeah, yeah. You know, and they gave us they give us other lines and divisions to divide us against ourselves instead of all of us being against them. Mm -hmm. And it, and the, and again, that's part of the problem. It shouldn't be against. It should be working together. Yeah, and that's why they want us to divide it, right? Because yeah. the thing is, like, if we're fighting each other, then we're not going to be fighting them. Yeah. You know? It, and that's what's happening. They they have, you know, us so divided that they've infiltrated the division between, like, people trying to, you know, have intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. You know? Men and women both are so resentful to, for each other, like, to each other. Because of generational trauma, which is fair, yeah, you know, but that resentment is not getting people into healthier things because we're not looking at the actual issue, and is that we've been tried to be forced into these artificial ideas of what relationships should be, yeah, through the pretense of divinity. Yeah, that's that's a really good way to put it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because if you don't fit this certain ideal of what a relationship is then you're not getting into heaven 
Yeah. In one way or another, depending on the culture. Yeah. Right? Or just, yeah, as a generalized statement, it's live this way and you'll be good. And, and if it's again, if you're living good, we should be able to look at every aspect of your life. So if you got nothing to hide, what's the problem? It's yeah. like, well, the big problem with that kind of thinking is, is that every time you give somebody that level of power, they never give it back. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, and that's where a lot of people want to have their actual freedom, not artificial freedom. Yeah. This sort of thing too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's, yeah. And I, I think that's where, like I said, they have, they have to control sent like how things are censored, how the internet is used in certain ways, because it's like, well, if they get together too much, then they'll have like a lot of really exactly. good ideas. Yeah. So they want to keep men and women divided, fighting each other. You yeah. know, if they can throw in some of the LGBTQ, uh, you know, in there to fight against everyone else and like, you know, make it so that like some people from opposing sides are also seeing them negatively. Yeah. Even better. Let's let's get some you know like uh, different like colors, uh, skin people fighting against each other as well. You know let's let's tackle every single you know yeah. area that we can so that we we have them so divided against each other, struggling emotionally, psychologically, to the the extent that they can only focus on surviving. Yeah. And they can't even get up to unify. Yeah. And and hold the government accountable for what it says it yeah. is. Well, that's the the greatest thing about the internet, which we didn't even realize that we were doing to ourselves, mm-hmm. is that it's so fast and easy to use that all of our attention goes there instead. And that's mm-hmm. really what's for sale is your attention. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. And, <laughs> and, and, and that is interesting that you say that because um, my one of my instructors at ACAD for a sound class Actually, I don't know, I think he got it from someone else, but he said the Third World War war won't be a physical one. It's going to be a war for who gets people's minds, yep. people's attention. Yeah, well, that would uh, kind of documentary, whatever, The Social Dilemma that was on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Exactly that direction. And it's a do- dopamine. We get, we get rewarded from an alternate reality... Yeah. Because our immediate reality is struggle because of the, the way that they set it up. Yeah. You know, for a lot of people, you know, there's people that are in privilege that they're like sometimes being like life is super easy and it can be. Yeah. You know, but that's not the whole extent of reality. Well, the thing is too, humankind defines ourselves by struggle. Mm. A lot of the time people tell it well are more than happy to tell you about the shit they've been through and they were they're struggles and their disgraces and stuff on their shirts like a badge of pride mm. and it's like yeah and to a degree it's it's kind of admirable because look at all the shit that i did and i can still smile at the end of the day mm. i can still go to the gym i can still go whatever work a job live a life sort of thing because i had mm. all this shit piled on me and i'm still kicking so it's like well there's some admiration to that but it's got to the point where well you didn't you haven't struggled enough well you don't understand struggle well i'm struggling yeah. so much harder than you yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of just... We all struggle. We all, yeah. In different ways. Yeah. That's the thing. And, and that's the biggest conversation that I started to hear uh, more and more people also talk about. Like the, the disempowerment of men. Yeah. Because we've been made to believe that we're empowered. No, only a few people that have born, been born into lineages of privilege yeah. f- within the patriarchy are the true men that benefit from yeah. patriarchy. Most men do not benefit from patriarchy at all. Yeah. And they made it that way so that once again, they can if they can keep people unconscious thinking that they know it all. Yeah. And what do what do guys get criticized for the most? Thinking that they know it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the whole mansplaining thing. Yeah, exactly, right? right? Yeah. But, it's, but it's in a sense true for, for a lot of guys. Yeah. You know? I'm um, guilty of it for sure. I, I've been so myself, you know, but that's a practice of like learning how to listen and learning how to be open to yeah. to thought because a lot of times even in psychology, like some of my instructors have, have told me in the past, it doesn't matter what you think reality is and we what you think is best for the person. It matters what their reality is and what they think is yeah. beneficial to them. If you can't tap into that, you're not going to be able to help them. You can tell them, do this, do that, this is going to benefit you. It's not going to change. 
Yeah. Because you have to understand people's motivations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's that's been a huge thing when you see good educators. Mm. And not just in schools, but like in every aspect of life, people that are some level of mentor or something to other people mm-hmm. is that if you're good at it, you you should be able to teach like a gorilla physics if you if you if you can understand what's relatable, mm-hmm. right? And that and that's the idea I think where yeah. where well like we we were talking about earlier like education is a huge part of what needs to to be lifted yeah. and be funded better and under, because there's a there's a huge understanding of what the world is yeah. and well and there's a big push to to tell people what to think and not how to think. Yeah. And learning how to think is far more important because if you're told what to yeah. think, what, you're not always going to have somebody around mm-hmm. to take care of you. Yeah. So if you can't troubleshoot your own problems, you're just going to fail and fall. Exactly. Which may be part of the reason why they do it that way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> right. well the thing is like, it, even high school was like, it, it is a fairly young part of the education system, you yeah. know, relatively speaking. And it was specifically made to slow down the younger people from stealing the old people's jobs, older people's jobs. Yeah. Well, and yeah. it's also for us to figure out who and what the hell we actually are is the other thing. Because, boy, oh boy, is there ever a lot of confusion in high schools. And not, not just now, since forever, because that's what teenagers are. Yeah. You're, you're a child that's being told what to do all the time. And then all of a sudden you get all these hormones and your body changes. And then all the jokes and make sense. And all the songs mm-hmm. make better sense. And... And it's like, okay, well, I'm an adult. It's like, no, you just learned to wipe your ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, slow yeah. down. Like, wait till you're at least 18 before we call you an adult. Oh, I can do everything. It's like, okay, show us then. Yeah, but that's the thing, too. <laughs> that's the thing, too. And I think right. that's a, a way of looking at education and at, um, at like, the difference between ages at, from a very authoritative authoritative. Um, an elitist kind of perspective because it's limiting kids because we're we're asking kids okay show me what you can do but we're also setting them up in a way that we're not showing them how to you know get shit done in the way that they could be because like what we just said you know like it's set up so that people are disempowered Um, so uh, I actually kind of want I want to try and do this um, because this is part of like part of the reason why I wrote my book um, to challenge people to think outside the box um, in terms of how how fast reality could change knowing what we know in terms of scientific research and data proven things um, or how in, quickly things can in, change in terms, yeah, in terms of the human reality mm-hmm. the, the human experience and how the systems that we create can be either less in alignment with human behavior and human the human experience or more in alignment with how we actually are and how we actually develop how we actually learn yeah and how we actually become empowered beings um so so i kind of joke about what what i would do if if i was given complete freedom to change anything um if i was hypothetically yeah. crowned like king yeah <laughs> I would be a tyrant. But <laughs> I'd be a tyrant. But go, go ahead. Um, well, uh, first, well, since we're talking about education, like we, we can move on to like the, the actual political system in a little bit. But yeah. uh, since we're talking about education, we'll start there um, because we have enough data and research into the human experience to focus on primary prevention methods which is something that has been lacking. We, we've been trying to deal with things at like the end part of the problem. So secondary and tertiary prevention methods. Yeah. Um, whereas if we focus on primary prevention methods, then we, uh, we have a better chance at not having as many problems at the end of the line kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, treat the problem, not the symptoms of the problem. Exactly, right? Yeah. Um, but the thing there is that humans are more complex than just, you know, teach this and you'll get that, yeah. right? So there are certain elements of unpredictability that would only be truly addressed if someone had complete agency <laughs> to change everything yeah. in, a, in a somewhat, you know, noble and understanding way. Yeah. So, so 
within the development of an individual, primary prevention methods can be divided into uh, inside the home and within schools. Yep. Right? Yeah, because that's definitely that's where most of, of nature and nurture is most yeah, important. Exactly, right? Yeah. Um, the thing is that we can make changes to the education system and start setting up kids with, you know, gradually teaching them about like how to build better self-esteem because there's enough research. Nathaniel Brand came up with a book that had how to integrate exercises and thought processes that would help people build better self-esteem. Yeah. And I've put it into practice myself. I've gotten great results. And in that book, it had instructions on how to integrate that into schools, into nice. the home. This book was published in 1994. Shit. So we've had, <laughs> we've had years to put this into practice. And like people don't even know about it. Yeah. It's you know, almost three decades of a book yeah. just sitting there. Just sitting there. And, and so um, we can start integrating classes that not only teach people how to build better self-esteem, better self-images, and how to create healthy relationship dynamics through teaching them communication strategies, um, de-escalating situations, things, things of that nature that would help people have way better personal lives and relational lives, right? Yeah. And that would be a huge benefit to people in general. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that that's going to address all the issue because then there's still the home life mm -hmm. and just because we're starting to treat you know or like try to give people the tools as a primary prevention method now doesn't mean that the lineage of uh generational trauma isn't you know like present outside of that system that we're we would be yeah. attempting to integrate into society yeah well there's always the unforeseen things that exactly, that are also right? affect like, life what is the dynamic within the parents what yeah how, how are they parenting you know um Cause well, some, even even natural disasters and stuff like that. Like, yeah, like so many factors. There's so lots, many factors, right? right? Yeah. Like, um, how many parents are present in the child's life? You know, things that could be completely out of someone's control, yeah. right? Um, but there are also elements within that that could be controlled if someone had complete agency to just change everything. Yeah. Because there could be a system set up to help empower parents through government regulation and you know government um hired people that would be a part of a social health care system that would help parents be held accountable to a certain st standard of parenting yep you know and so this would be a lot of jobs that would come out of like the complete automization of like our existence because we could be automizing a lot more than we are, yeah. but it wouldn't serve the economy and it wouldn't serve. But what do people do when they don't have things to do that machines could do? People now, sometimes that people naturally want to help people. Yeah. And one so, more often than not, if I, I, from my personal experience, I should say at least anyways, when you don't have something to do, that's where depression sets in. And that's mm -hmm. typically where addiction jumps in too. Yeah. So yeah, people need things to do. And volunteering is honestly one of the most gratifying things I've ever experienced. Yeah. I, could, I and, couldn't believe how, how functional that was. And so in, in that ideal scenario of like employing people to help parents be held accountable, um, then the community is, as a whole just creating this huge network of support yep. that would just naturally make people better thinkers, better, you know, yeah. uh, choice makers. The, the thing is, it's like that, that's a great way of looking at stuff, but there's always pitfalls with that type of thinking though too, because, you, well, it could, because it's, I and mean, you know that it sounds like authoritarianism or communism, basically, where you're giving basically all the power to one person. So it doesn't matter what. what no, that, I know. I, and then don't get me wrong. And I know, yeah. I know that's not where you're going with it. Yeah. But at the same time, like too, just because somebody has that kind of power, yeah. there's going to be a handful of the population says it doesn't matter what they do, they're doing it wrong. Yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> where the, the, the political side of it comes in because like, that's just yeah. a, a funny way of me yeah. expressing. Well, and the thing um, is, I, under, I understand though too that you're not, you're not saying this is entirely how it, all of society has to change, but the basic important parts like nutrition, feed your kids properly, they learn better. Yeah. Make sure that they're hydrated, make sure they get a good night of sleep. 
Because like, mm-hmm. and that's typically where society does start is from children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, because we were all there, and if we're not doing them a service, we're doing ourselves a disservice. And how to communicate? Because there's better ways of communicating and motivating someone. Because the thing is, like, I've worked in that industry as well of like respite care. Yep. Um, and I was able also like I guess I'm coming from another perspective, but um, as soon as parents started to adapt some of the things that I was doing to get compliance from the kids, yeah. they had way better communication. Yeah. When they reverted back to, I'm the parent, you're the kid, you do as I say, it complete, com- so it's also communication. It completely oh, yeah. changed the, the dynamic. Um, when, when, it was, when there wasn't that dynamic of like, you just don't know, so I'm going to tell you what to do, and you're just going to do it, and if not, then you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, and that carries on into adulthood very often because mm. if you ask somebody to, to help you or to do something, they're far more likely to do it because they, even though, even if it's an illusion, it's an illusion of choice that mm. is where it's like, do this. It's like, well, you're not in control of me. You're not my parent. I'm not a child sort of thing like that. Mm. And that's, and that's where that polarity starts to creep back into even just regular everyday life sort of thing. Mm. And that's what I found when when I ask people to do things for me, it's it's far more easy to get get them to help you out. But if you mm-hmm. tell them to do something, it's oh, it, definitely. You yeah. can't you can't tell anybody to do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Really, right? <laughs> you, 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 if you get this like like feeling in you that you're like, no, yeah. You know? Even if you yeah. want to, sometimes you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just yeah. it. That's and it's that, again like a simple level of psychology is where. Exactly, you ask yeah. and it's just like, well, I got to do this or that. It's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to act, make that sound like a question. I need you to do this. Yeah. Like that. And you, and you throw like a little bit of laughter or a joke or something in there as well. And they're like, oh, yeah. okay, I understand. Yeah, this creating, is important. Creating rapport and like those things yeah. could be broken up, up into like formulas that people can adapt to their personality. So that's what yeah. I mean about like empowering people in that area as well. Well, then um, a depth of actual education, not just two plus two equals four. Exactly. And not just you know things that most people won't actually like end up necessarily using yeah you know like i've used some you know like um some things in math that like i never thought i would use but only because i'm trying to build things isn't it amazing how well math fits into life (laughs) when you build things in equations like yeah 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 um yeah no but like uh since we were like kind of talking about like the way that i'm expressing this is like one person having the complete authority that's not actually how I, I actually idealize a government that would no, and I, be run because I honestly I like I was I, just trying to shoot holes through because it's like somebody no. else is missing. Like, and yeah. I love that because <laughs> it, it's all it always helps me like find greater clarity. And so, yeah. um, one of the cool things that I I like about um, the the way that it, like Plato and Aristotle talk about like the philosopher kings is that they didn't really actually define it very well. Yeah. And so it left a lot of open space to speculate. Yeah. How, how would a, a group of intellectually led, ethically led individuals, which is not what we have, <laughs> um, that would create the most you know, fair system through that embodiment of those qualities um, look like? Yeah. You know, it, it couldn't be uh, a party system because that divides people, that creates biases, that creates, you know, everything that we already mentioned about in, yeah. earlier on. Um, it couldn't be a hierarchical um, if system. It, yeah. yeah. Um, it would just have to be a task-oriented system. Yeah. Well, if, if it was true egalitarianism, where there's a lot more distribution of power, not a hierarchy where very few people control everything. Like a lot of people control a lot of stuff would be different. Yeah. Well, but more so, more so <laughs> I mean like, for example, uh, not having like a, a prime minister. Yeah, exactly. Or, or like, you know, those like main figures that like are like the, no, like we're going to have a group of people here that have been selected because they are either scientists uh, you know, physicist, um, psychologist of high regard in each area. Yeah. And, and we are discussing problems from a problem, uh, solution based 
mindset rather than affiliations to parties and uh, you know like certain and also you know eco- people that know about the the economy you know yeah. economists that that would be an all another addition because in order to transition to something else we we can't just snap our fingers and change everything from day to night we need people that know about the systems that exist to to be like okay how can we transition from this to something more to something more um civil more evolved more empowering for people yeah right and more efficient in the way that uh we uh, control and supply and distribute resources yeah and some of that is kind of the the idea kind of more like the everybody holding hands under a rainbow sort of thing, mm-hmm. which I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of really good ideas with that, but I also know some people don't like holding hands. Some people hate rainbows, mm-hmm. right? So, so yeah. there, there are is- issues with it and more so to the, the point that I agree in the, in the sense that there should be socialized programs like we have in Canada, like socialized medicine. We shouldn't have to pay a shit pile of money just to go get our broken knee fixed or something. I mean, that's fair that you just go get it done. I mean, mostly just on the ethics of it, because the whole idea of doctors taking the Hippocratic Oath is to do no harm. Mm -hmm. Well, if your bottom line or your profit margins are more important than helping people, you shouldn't be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Right? Right? So that's a good idea to have. Well, and same thing with education. Mm -hmm. Another thing that should be socialized and funded better than it is now. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I thought was weird when NDP in Alberta got in and they spent a bunch of money and they built like 195 schools throughout the province and they were only in for a short amount of time and they got booted out real quick but it's like okay but almost 200 schools in a province Mm -hmm. that seems like it was kind of overdue even at that point Mm -hmm. so maybe yeah it sucks that a bunch of money went to one project and really nothing else during their their time in power Mm -hmm. but it was clearly something that was for the people Mm -hmm. because it's something that we needed Mm -hmm. and if we don't have well, we definitely have kids to fill the schools because classes are over overbooked. Then yeah. pay the pay more teachers more money so they can stick around and do the job properly too. Yeah. So so like I mentioned, uh, like at the beginning, um, even though like I love the idea of empowering people for more and more freedom, like I still I'm very aware that structure is needed. Yeah. Um. So within saying that, um, that I kind of envision. Uh, non-hierarchical political system I don't necessarily mean that there is no structure yeah uh, because that no it'd be it, super it would, structured actually it would be, yeah it would even have more to be so. even more so structured yeah. to the extent that like individuals that were part of I mean some sort of hierarchy 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 hierarchy, hierarchy, hierarchy. <laughs> hierarchy. yeah <laughs> some some measure of hierarchy is inevitable yeah um you know but Accountability uh, should be a part of it, though, too. I think. Yeah. So, so the the way in which I feel like hierarchy maybe could be reduced to its minimum would be through greater accountability, and that's exactly where I was going. Yeah. Um, because the way in which uh, politicians get held accountable is very non-transparent. Yeah. So anyone that that would be a group, for example, of like the the main people making the choices at the end of the day where it, w- it wouldn't be just like one or like the parliament divided in parties and it would be like just people having discussions and being able to have transparency about like everything that goes on not just that but even to go as like radical as like personal lives like if you're willing to if you want to be running the country and making some of the biggest decisions for a huge amount of people you should be able to make the commitment to have most of your life be completely transparent like there should be no question about like why because then why do you have someone to hide you know yeah and well, if and that amount of yeah. responsibility you know to, to be held accountable in the, the way that people want to hold the government the government accountable that's to the extent that it, it would have to be yeah because otherwise that's why things happen that we're like why is this happening? Why is this person spending money where they shouldn't? Why is this blah, blah, blah? You know, that's what happens because yeah. there's not enough transparency and people can sometimes get away with things until they find out that they did. Yeah. Well, I think we're, we are all 
have been since forever trying to work towards a, some level of utopia where our, everybody is relatively happy, safe, well fed, whatever sort of thing like that too. And because of that, there's ever increasing complexity, mm. right? And I think yeah. that's, I mean, well, and compared to what most people lived a hundred years ago, they would think what we have now is a utopia. But we, yeah. we have a lot of problems that they would probably just shrug off. It's like, well, that's not a problem. Yeah. Sort of thing. So some of it is perspective, but some of it also is that there's got to be a lot more to it because to, to actually have a proper utopia, you have to have so many moving parts that yeah. if, if anything sets it off kilter, the whole thing is going to start falling apart sort of thing. Like yeah, that. no. And I so think, and I think of... that utopia is not necessarily like possible. It's like trying no. to attain percep- perfection within yourself. Yeah. Like you, you may be able to attain something that is close to perfection, yeah. but you're always going to have more room. You're going to have, you know, you can grow more. There's yeah. always going to be someone that's better. Well, it should um, be the idea of finding balance, not be all good. Exactly. So that, that's exactly where like, uh, uh, a more like realistic perspective of a utopia would would be a balanced society instead yeah, of a a, balanced society. an all good society. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, because it's it's the same. It would be like you know going back to making almost like divinely coded. You know, like this is how it like a perfect society should be. But yeah. no, it's just more balanced, more of a, of an integration of our natural drives and our natural needs yeah. into the actual system which i mean like if if we can create everything that we have right now to the extent that we've expanded our species to such an extent that we not only have the abundance to like feed everyone in the world if we really wanted to yeah. if we really wanted to we have that ability pretty easy yeah you know if we can do that and I think we can go beyond, you know, some of the things that are holding us back from doing that. Yeah. Well, I think I heard some ridiculous stat, like we produce 40% more food than we consume even. It's like something preposterous, but if yeah, you, but yeah. people are still dying of starvation. Exactly. Like, well, I, the other one too that it kind of blew my mind is that leprosy is still a thing. And I'm not 100%, I'd have to check this, but I'm pretty sure you can cure it with penicillin. Huh. Why is there still leprosy in the world? Yeah, it's that kind like, of thing, right? Like that, that <laughs> solutions solutions are dictated by the economy rather than the actual capability of us solving the problem. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest thing. And that that it right there is like it. Yeah. You know, we could be solving a lot more problems if we were just just focused on just solving the problem instead of like Oh, well, what happens if we solve the problem? And there is a balance, right? But that's why we need people that are unbiased to... Oh, fuck, that's tough. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why, like, that, that thing I said about, like, complete transparency would almost be, like, a complete necessity to be yeah. able to shift from a party system to a, a problem-solution-based system. Yeah. No, and that's, that's actually exactly what I the direction of like egalitarianism where you have somebody that looks after just the food, somebody that looks after just health, somebody that looks at just after me- mental well-being mm-hmm. or whatever, a, a group of people that do that sort of thing like that. So even with each of those topic or each of those groups has a, a minimum of six people at the top that are working through things because each of them will troubleshoot different ideas that the other person didn't see, which is exactly what bureaucracy is about. However, it takes time, mm-hmm. and some solutions need to be solved faster than others. Mm-hmm. So yeah. there's also that part of it too, which is difficult to get past. But mm-hmm. at the same token, though, too, it, it is a far better way of looking at things because, yeah, like dropping the whatever titles and names that everybody are going to definitely attach to that idea, like I've already done to you a few times, like, oh, that sounds communist. Like, <laughs> no, it's not what I'm saying. Yeah. You're not listening, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and that's the thing. It's like I know what you're saying. I understand it. It's uh-huh. like it's the it's the larger picture. It's not just that. Well, this has to be this one. It can't be anything else. No, no, no. Yeah. It can be lots of stuff. Exactly. If we so work that, together, is the idea. So that that's what I've been like uh, yeah. realizing has been like a unifying thread in like making people understand. You know, it's like 
yes, but, like, there's more room to, to play with. Like, it doesn't have to be so narrow-minded, and that's yeah. the thing, right? Well, because, yeah, there's so because, many things in life that are on a spectrum. I keep making that point to people. Like, no, like nothing yeah. is one or the other, black or white. I mean, even, even black and white, like, which black or white? What mm-hmm. are we talking about? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, like, exactly. Light, sound... It's, it's part of one of the universal uh, laws in the yeah. Kabbalion, actually. Yeah, um, exactly, because everything lives on a spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Like there's, and it doesn't matter what topic you can think of, there's always multiple opinions of every topic. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so when we bring all these like ideas, these abstract ideas that are like great solutions you know, to the systems that we have, um, realistically, we can only make those happen, like some of those happen, really fast yeah based on where we are in terms of like the systems that we have and the agency that we have as like regular people to do something about it um one of the easiest things to change would be education yeah but you know like there's like uh scientists from nasa now like protesting and like saying putting their jobs on the line you know speaking out about like the climate disasters that could happen if we if we don't make major changes within the next three years yeah so so that's another interesting factor because okay we can make all these changes slowly because once people start to be properly empowered at least from the school system you know completely disregarding the other factors that's going to set like place a, a seed in place that would potentially flourish into a lot you know in a long long time yeah because everything is a process, like you said. Some things can change really fast, but people and like changing all those systems in the way that we've spoken in a very natural way by the min- most minimal change that could happen, that would take a long time. If we started to put in place other things within, you know, what we talked about, um, then things would happen faster. Yeah. But that's the thing in terms of like, the time frame that we have in order for like our resources to be affected by the same systems that we're using to yeah. create those resources. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And more specifically to the, that point too, like something like the plastic problem of the world. Yeah. yeah. How is that an end? Again, how is that an end user problem? Yeah. Give us other options or you guys that are making all the plastics, you stop making as many plastics. Yeah. There's lots of other materials we can use. Yeah. Cause a lot of times people are forced into buying what's cheap and what's cheap Plastic. Yeah. And again, profit margins. Exactly. Life doesn't matter. Exactly. Yeah. Profit margin matter. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a lot like the corporations that don't want to be held responsible too, you know? Yeah. Well, um, and that's, that's, that's the other part is corporations are made by people. A corporation doesn't want to do anything by itself. Exactly. And it can't. Yeah. It's because of the people that are there and they, well, it's the business that's doing this or it's the corporation that's doing that. It's like, well, yeah, but it's run by people still. Shouldn't yeah. they be held accountable for what we're doing? Yeah, yeah. You know, like there's exactly yeah. There's a lot of people that are talking about sustainability and this, that, and the other thing. It's like okay, but you better not have an Amazon account then. Mm. Like, walk down the street, go talk to your local shopkeeper. Mm-hmm. Like, buy local, be be a part of your community if that's how you feel. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was and that was actually kind of the what other point that I was going to make when we were talking about the uh, the Occupy thing mm-hmm. and how it got muddled with all these, well, uninformed people that are not understanding. It's like, okay, well, we're, we're doing this to stand up for certain things. Say, okay, but you're staying in, what, mass-produced tents? <laughs> you organizing this on your iPhone? Like, mm-hmm. do you not see some of the irony that's going on here? Mm-hmm. You're using all of these products made by massive corporations that you're bitching at. It's also <laughs> unavoidable, right? Like, like what you say, like, I... I you know, I consider myself like all for sustainability, but I myself am forced to buy plastic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even, wow. even sustainable products come in some sometimes plastic products, and I yeah. and I'm forced to. Yeah, it you sucks. Right? So so it's like the, the hypocrisy is almost unavoidable because, it, like you said, it's not a consumer problem. Yeah. It's a producer problem, yeah. and so even if you're like, we need to change. You're being forced because you're giving only like the options that you're being given. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like, and that well, not even kind of more of a comedic way. At one of those G8 summits years and years ago, and there's a bunch of protesters there, like stop oil and gas, this, that, and the other thing. And one of the, the oil executive gets up there. How many of you rode your horse here today? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay, but again, we're not allowed to ride horses in the city, right? Yeah. And like, I'd, I'd like to grow more on my own food and be more sustainable that way. It's like, is it affordable to even do that? Yeah. Is and it better not, to actually spend the money at, at a local shop to do it instead for me? Yeah. We're not like, given the, the options, right? Yeah. And that's because, like, if we're going to talk about that, like, we could technically be setting up people with the technology to grow a decent amount of their own food. Which we should be doing. Yeah. Every like, one of these rooftops should have a, a garden on it, really. And, and not even that, like, indoor growing things, too. So, like, even going further than that, you could have both the rooftop garden yeah. and a personalized hy- hydroponic, you know, little growing area. Yeah. Especially right here, this west facing window. You Perfect. could you could have you know, yeah. and like you would need soil with the hydroponic system and you could still grow you know, not maybe not like a lot a lot of things, but you know, like you could grow enough for sustaining some you know, lessening some of your costs. Yeah. Well, and reducing, reducing trucking costs, reducing, reducing trucking costs, reducing all that. Yeah. 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 Well, the thing is too, is that if you're growing it yourself, you probably have a better control of the environment. You have, mm-hmm. you can use less pesticides because exactly. it's in your own home. Like there's, there's a lot of factors that could be mitigated. Exactly. So, yeah. For and lots of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, like right now we have a lot of solutions to problems. If, yeah. If we, if we really focus on that. Yeah. But there's there's also the the complacency with a lot of it too because there's well this is how we've done it forever yeah so like, well that doesn't mean we can't optimize right exactly yeah. you know like I was I was working like building an office at uh, one of the Nmax uh, power plants mm-hmm. one like towards Balzac mm-hmm. and I was looking at the system and I was like I don't know that much of what's going on but wouldn't it be better to capture the already heated steam and put it back into the system. Mm. Because like we're using, we're heating up water to turn turbines because that's basically how all power is generated. Mm-hmm. And then like how they heat the water is the thing. So what, the way they, they do it is they're, they're using natural gas. Mm-hmm. Okay, well then they buy that from a different part of the NMAX company. Plus they buy the water from a different branch of the company mm-hmm. to, to produce the power. So there's, there's money transferring back and forth, which is good because it helps move the economy and stuff as, as well. Mm-hmm. But couldn't you reduce some of that by capturing the water putting it back into the system so it doesn't have to have as much energy pushed into it to begin with yeah and there's like and there's like a handful of things that i kind of asked the guys that were working there like well i don't know yeah exactly but that's the thing too like that you you made a perfect point of like once again how the the system the economy the the movement of money that is good for the economy is keeping innovation back yeah you know because that could be made more efficient if we were truly focused on just problems and solutions. Yeah. And yeah, I heard a great quote um, in the, uh, before the beginning of this year actually, um, about truth. That whenever you deviate from simplicity, you're also deviating from truth. Because truth is often simple. Yeah, well, that's the whole idea of Occam's razor, right? Of what? Occam's razor? What is that? Uh, the yeah. idea that you basically slice off all the parts yeah. down to the, its most simple pieces to, mm. to find the truth of what something is. Mm. Because the more complex it is, the chances are that there's less of it that's real. Mm. Right? Mm. And more often than not, that's what it is. There's, a lot of the world's problems have very simple solutions. Yeah. Yeah. But, we, but we tell ourselves these complex stories that, to, make, to justify the shit that we do. Yeah, right? that's, that's it right there. And it's the same with relationships. It's the same with, you know, our own life. You know, we can overcomplicate getting out of bed. Oh, yes. <laughs> getting out of bed. We can overcomplicate something as simple as getting out of bed. Yeah. There's sometimes there's really great reasons for that in each individual's life. Yeah. That is related to the struggle that's been created, you know, artificially for us. Yeah. But still, you know, it's a simple thing to get out of bed. But this is one example. Yeah, and that's that's so true because before you get out of bed, you're already thinking about work or what I have in the fridge or whatever. And it's like, why does any of that matter? Because right here, right now is what matters. Yeah. Right? And what you can do. What you can do. Because yeah. whenever we, that's where we also start deviating from, 
you know, truth in, in, yeah. con- in making it more complex, you know, focusing on this or that, like the shortcomings, the, the things needed that are not here. But if we focus on the simplest part, which is what you can do, yeah, that is the truth. Yeah. No and, way. And, and regardless, <laughs> regardless of how, um, like what the context of that reality is, you're gonna be a lot less um, troubled by all the different factors that overcomplicate the truth. Yeah. Then if you just focus on what you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I, I I think that's, that's why social media is so addictive is because we're so attached to drama because we well we haven't evolved mm. past that basically is a big mm. part of it. And they I think they talk about that in Sapiens that uh, mm. book by Yuval Harari, and we kind of we well we haven't evolved to the point of the apex predator or something like a bear or a shark or something has they've taken millions or hundreds of millions of years to to evolve to be a perfect predator or perfect at the top of their food chain sort of thing like that we went from the middle to the top in really a couple of generations right so we're we're still basically sitting here with our ape brains or monkey brains sort of thing like that constantly afraid of things and if that's not enough we're giving ourselves more stress because Every time a notification goes off, is this a good email or a bad email? Mm-hmm. Somebody honked at me when I was walking down the street. Is that a good or a bad thing? Mm-hmm. You know, like somebody's smaller than I am. Are they afraid of me just because I'm standing there? Yeah. Right. So there's, which I guess that's more of an older one, but but still, like there's there's like so many other extra stresses and complications we put on ourselves, and really of our of our large emotions, we only have one kind of positive one. Like we have joy, happiness, love direction, but we have fear and stress and anxiety and the confusion. Pressure. And like, there's, there's yes. so many other negative yeah. things that we have that we kind of have, we're always preparing for something that, that likely won't happen, mm-hmm. but we can't help ourselves. That's, that's how we think, Yeah, you know, and we're, all, we're always using the past to, to try to figure out the future. Mm-hmm. But like we were saying right now is all you actually have. And the thing is people are rarely also given the time to give time to themselves yeah also and that helps with all of that you know when you give yourself time when you're able to let go of the tensions that build up in your body through emotional stress psychological stress physical stress Mm -hmm. you're more ready for all those negative things that might come your way and you can handle it from a wiser place you know so and I've noticed it in like different ways in reality not just in my life but other people's lives that like tension oftentimes like manifest in different ways and it can keep you from handling things in, in the way that you could otherwise do right like yeah. even even in a physical sense if you have tension in your body your range is not going to be the same your range of motion is not going to be the same and your ability to potentially deal with situations that may arise is not going to be the same yeah well learning how to shake shit off like physically sometimes but psychologically is the other part and mm. I think well I think they talked about this in Kung Fu about how um, like a zebra or a bird or something like that is get chased by a predator and it gets away mm. well what does it do well, it's pretty much when it finds that it's safe mm. it physically shakes it shakes, off yeah, yeah. because it's like it's sitting there with this anxiety it's like yeah. I need to get rid of this so they shake it out and say okay everything's cool I can be chill I can eat grass again or whatever sort of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. we don't do that I know and that's, we just sit you know, there with it what I just thought about <laughs> that's super funny that is kind of related to that artificial kind of frame of thought getting away from the natural frame of thought and natural reality yeah. because that that perspective comes almost from a place of being like I'm a human I should be able to deal with it in a more civilized way so if I'm civil, I'm going to remain in control. I'm going to be still as much as I can. You bottle it up. What happens? It gets worse if you bottle it up. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And all we have to do is shake. Just like shake. Yeah. Like yeah, sometimes it's a, naturally do. Yeah. Sometimes it's yeah. a physical shake. Sometimes it's going and getting sweat on. Sometimes just going outside for a walk. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you got to unwind that shit somehow. Uh-huh. And yeah. it's hugely helpful. And that, that's the other thing that I think people miss the point of exercise mm. it's not physical 
it's pro it's like eighty percent mental and forty percent physical. And I mean, and there's yes, an emotional aspect in that as well, like, yeah. you know, because like you said, it helps process emotions, right? For sure, yeah. Well, yeah, and you talk about anybody that's done something difficult. When you get onto the other side of it, it's like, this is an accomplishment. Look what I've done, sort of thing, you know, and that's kind of more the positive idea of what us framing ourselves in our, our versions of our own struggles is that, no, I don't need to go lift heavy things, but I'll feel better if I do. You know, like, it's not going to actually do anything other than make my brain feel better and my body work slightly better. But if I do that every day this week, it's going to be even better all the way around. You know, so that when I do have complications show up, will they actually be that big of a deal or can I can I stay calm through it now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and part of the issue, I think, that, yeah, people just don't fully, yeah, like you're saying, miss the point of what like being physical and working out being active is actually about because yeah. they're more, more focused on like the physical appearance of it yeah. than the actual physical process that goes on in your body and your mind and your emotions yeah. when you go through physical experiences that you know challenge your cardiovascular system that like shake off excess stress and release stress oftentimes too. Yeah. Well, that's actually what I thought was so really interesting because that was actually something my, my high school football coach had said. It's that football in general, but it's like generalizing it is like physical fitness is that 80% and 40%. Like 80% physical, 40% mental. It's like I understand that it adds up to 120, but it's like that's kind of the point though too because if you're not engaging your body, your mind's going to suffer for it twice as much. So it's going to, you you being at a hundred percent or, you know, people saying like I'm 110% sort of thing like that. It's like, you can actually be better than you thought was possible. Mm-hmm. I know that's what I was because I was, well, I was an alcoholic for years, mm-hmm. you know, and going to the Kung Fu studio, they were nice about it mostly, <laughs> but they pushed me in directions that I didn't think I could do until I started to realize I'm worth more than what I thought I was. I can do more than I thought I could. And all of a sudden it's like, okay, well, that's why all this positivity comes from. And okay, now everything's easier. I don't focus on stressful things that, that bother me anymore. Yeah. You know, like I, I still get caught up in social media once in a while, but I cut a lot of that stuff out of my life because it's not positive. It's, it's well, it's, um, it's a psychological disease, basically, mm. or a virus that we're intentionally affecting ourselves with. Yeah. You know, we don't need to, but we do it anyway. Yeah. Which is kind of human, I yeah, guess. No, but. <laughs> and, and, and you know what, what an is, interesting thought, uh, actually talking to Master Piercy, um, yeah. we talked about how there was a part in the Middle East at one point where they actually shut off the internet for a peer, period of time because people were starting to gather uh, through Facebook groups and things like that. And it was like a kind of an authoritarian government type yeah. place. I can't remember the exact place, um, but they turned it off, and the opposite of what they thought happened would ha- actually happen because people weren't distracted, couldn't escape as easily as they could, couldn't get that dopamine he- hit or whatever, and then they got off their asses and then actually, you know, made the movement even stronger. Nice. So, so that's what like it like made me think about what would happen, you know. If for a week, the internet was gone. Oh, man. Wouldn't that be so cool? <laughs> That'd be like such an interesting experiment. Yeah. Well, and I wonder how many... Of course, my mind always goes to the bad part of it. Like, <laughs> yeah, but, <okay. laughs> but... But at the same time, well, too, it's like how much liberation would that create as well? How much conversation? How, uh, free of bias? Yeah. Uh, uh, also, yeah. you know, because that's what it also would kind of almost prevent people from getting access to. Yeah. That. Well, and that's actually a big part of the reason why I wanted to talk to you today is because we've been having really stilted conversations online because you can't get a full ex- like expression out properly. And even if mm. you, you think you've typed it in nicely, it's not read the same way that you're saying it. Mm. So being able to sit here and look at you and talk to you, read your body language, see what you're actually about. 
It's like, okay, well, we have way more in common than I thought we were going exactly. to. Exactly. That's <laughs> what happens naturally right. with people, right? Like, yeah. Um, it's been really interesting, like, being a vegan for a couple of years because oftentimes people make assumptions about you as well yeah. uh, because you've chosen to not eat certain things. Um, and uh, well, you just othered yourself. <laughs> well, well, it's just like, it's kind of funny because, like, it's interesting that, like, for example, um, my ex's family... They were all hunters. Oh, okay. Um, and she was worried introducing me to the family. Um, and then this one specific uncle that was very political. Okay. You know? The old conservative but, uncle. But it's interesting. <laughs> he was actually liberal, which was surprising. Okay. But, <laughs> but apparently if people got talking about politics, it always ended up in like a kind of uncomfortable situation with a lot of tension. Yeah. And they were surprised with how like much we connected and bond like you know like and the family like loved me as far as i knew you know <laughs> but yeah. uh, but they were all surprised because all of a sudden being face to face with the actual person that could have you know some conflicting views with you um is not what you thought that person was and then you find out that you have way more in common and you connect, and then you create rapport, yeah. and then you start to have love between people that might otherwise think, oh, it's that person, oh, and the other side is like, oh, that person too, like, I don't want to be like that person, you know? Yeah. yeah, well, that's just it. I mean, it's so easy to unintentionally seem like a troll yeah. uh, online, as yeah. where, yeah, you, you actually talk to somebody. Yeah. It's way different, or yeah, with some of the shit that you see it people takes a say. Lot of skill, yeah. Well, and you see some of the shit that people put on there. Like, would you actually say that to that person's yeah, face? Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's and the other part of it is though too is like I I understand the difference in people where somebody's maybe been got dealt an unfortunate hand. They've never really had any level of control or power in their life, and this is the first time they can actually have a voice or have some level of control over something. So that's kind of the other good and bad part of it too. Yeah. You never so. know where uh, like other people are coming from and that's part of it. Like what you were saying too, you know, you never know where someone is coming from through an online platform. Yeah. You know, which you, is all the more reason to not judge, right? Yeah. And, and, but when you're with someone, you have the chance. I mean, if you have the time and space, you can get to know why that person thinks that way. If you're really coming from a heartfelt place. Yeah. And that's the other thing, like, um, because of the societies that we've created, we've closed our hearts so much. Um, I've been guilty of it myself, yeah. you know, because, you know, um, people are out there sometimes for themselves. And, like, um, if you don't know your own worth, the, the, the world will tell you yeah. that you don't mean anything, <laughs> basically. Yeah, and that you're replaceable, that you're, you know, all these these things that are not necessarily true. Like, you know, yeah. someone out there is like had a smile, has a memory of something that you said that added value to them, and it, their life would have not been the same if they had not come across you in some sort of way. Yeah, well, that's what I love about living in Calgary is that we have this massive city here, and it's. Honestly, it's pretty safe here. Like, they're, compared to a lot of cities in the world, this kind of feels like a really big, small town mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, I you, never thought about it that way. Like, uh, I mean, downtown, I mean, you're always going to have problems in the core of any city mm-hmm. just because of the way life is. But at the same token, we're also like an hour away from the Rocky Mountains. Mm-hmm. And every time I, I get too caught up in my head, I go out there for a walk. And I look at these things that will be here long after I'm dust. And it's like, how big are my problems actually? Mm-hmm. They don't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> you know, lighten up. Take a joke once in a while. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. and that's that's the other part. And well, and like we well talked about before, like I don't need to try to explain shit to everybody or try to correct them on everything. You know, and mm-hmm. I'll try to you know help people troubleshoot things, but it's like sometimes they're not looking for that. Yeah. You know, that my opinion is, yeah, is, takes, is, is it valuable. Takes <laughs> yeah, it takes wisdom and you have to learn that um, if you want to have peace in your life, basically. Because you can really, like, damage your own peace trying to give someone advice that doesn't want it. Yeah. And, like, that's one of the hardest 
you know, especially if you like really care about people and you love passionately. Yeah. Um, yeah, it can be hard because sometimes you want the best for someone, but if they don't want it, yeah, it's going to be a constant struggle and you're going to, you're going to make them feel impossible to love and you're going to make yourself impossible to love because both of you are like, like, uh, but I want the best for you, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I know, but I don't want it. And it's like, why don't you want it? And yeah. it's just like this back and forth that's like, well, there's a lot of reasons behind it, but I, you know, oftentimes and rarely people are willing to address um, those those things that lead to some things that they don't want and they're, like they're constantly complaining about. Yeah. Well, and even even actually just the way you, you word it is like, I want the best for you. It's like, well, first of all, how do you know what's best for me? To, yeah, to a certain degree. To, to a certain point. Yeah. And then the other yeah. thing is too is like, does everything have to be the best all the time? That's the other part, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's something I've had to kind of calm down with on some of, some of my part. It's uh-huh. like, I got to do work exactly a certain way or I got to say perfect words and structure sentence exactly. Just get some shit out sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's part of doing the podcast. Like, it's not perfect by any stretch. Yeah. But yeah, being yeah. able to talk with people is the point of this. Yeah, definitely. You know, the fact that I put it online almost means nothing because I'm not looking to get monetized. Or yeah, it's, and, and even it's those, evolving. And even important. those imperfections that are like what make it really special too for people yeah. and like personality comes through you know because that's what like before we started filming and like or maybe you were filming already but it's gonna be edited out yeah um, <laughs> but uh, what we were talking about like uh my performance last night yeah um it was it was the the fact that i was coming from such a genuine place of like bringing joy to myself in such an extent that like i was sharing that joy in like a different way that made it so effortless and so fun for everyone there too yeah that they could see that I wasn't trying and I've been you know there's I've tried before and you can see when someone is trying which yeah. is part of the process you know of learning yeah you know, how to express yourself authentically authentically and being aware of the audience as well yeah and um, it's well it's the eyes yeah people smile from their eyes not from their mouth yeah. And that's a big difference. That's, that's something that it, you don't even think about. And well, and that's again, windows to the soul. I mean, that's a huge part of it. So uh, if they can see your eyes, they can see how genuinely good you feel. Yeah. It's infectious yeah. In, in the best kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's, it's been interesting. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of people could tap into that. But once again, you know, like the, the situation that we've created, and not everyone has the drive to, to find that or the, the resources. Yeah. So. Um, or they're not even sure what that is even necessarily. Yeah. Like where to, to look for it even to start with. Yeah. Because cause what might be perfect for me, someone else tries to do it, might not work the same. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But I like the, the phrase that it doesn't matter if you're ready, start. Because if you wait till you're ready, you're never going to start. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Like, and that's so I true. I wasn't the same when I started for sure. Like. Definitely not the same. I had to figure it out for sure to get to that that point that I'm describing right now, where like it felt amazing for both me and the audience, like the whole experience. Yeah, it was a learning process, and I had to force myself. Like I wasn't ready. I by any means am not the best musician, you know, like that exists yeah. or anything. Or you know, when I was starting, way less. You know, now I'm I'm I've evolved because of my commitment. Yeah. to practice but well that's the, the I whole, started way before I was ready <laughs> yeah but that's, and that's the whole like Brene Brown thing like the strength of vulnerability yeah and it's like you're willing to put yourself out there knowing that you might eat shit up there yeah and you might <laughs> do it and you might do it several <laughs> times right yeah. there were times that I questioned very hardly like why should I even get on stage anymore yeah. <laughs> because I was like shit man that was not like the best or like what I envisioned or like what I thought you know yeah. but it's those expectations sometimes that get also in the way of your your truest self yeah but you also look at it it's not it wasn't a defeat like I do something well or I learn from it mm-hmm. and that's the other part of it too it's like again if you don't look at things as right or wrong it's like well you kind of never lose them yeah 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 no definitely and it's like the further, like going back to that, the further you get from 
from the truth, the more complex it gets. The, the simplest part is that you're never going to be great at anything the first few times that you do it. Yeah. You know, and, and we if, label, we can, we can get in the trap of labeling ourselves and being like, I guess I'm just not good at that. Yeah. But even, or even if equally as bad as that, if you do well to start, you stagnate there. You mm -hmm. never learn to optimize or how to, to reach more or to do better necessarily either. So there's, yeah, there's always benefit in, in screwing up, mm -hmm. you know, like hopefully it's not such a bad screw up that it's going to affect bad like a lot of stuff in certain yeah, ways but something simple that's like that's why it helps to have an expert that guides you to do that yeah right um and that's what like the same conversation applies to what we we're talking about in the the bigger scheme of things as well because um what how did you put it again the start start before you're ready uh, it <laughs> no. was like I, I like lost my train of thought for like a second there and like um, what was the thing that we said just before? I don't know. I have to back it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot been going on. That's yeah, kinda... I know, I know. Um, but it was about uh, how people um, like restrict themselves through like. Oh, when you do things right, you mean like you and don't? When you do things right. You don't think you have to change or be better. You can. You don't have to optimize necessarily. You just think you've done it right, so that's all there is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, maybe it'll come to me. I had it will in five minutes, I'm sure. It'll be yeah. like in the middle of a, in a completely other fight. <laughs> yeah. And it, it'll pop in. Because the so. air is perfect, yeah. And yeah. I like, for a second, it just like, shot yeah. away from me. Yeah. That's the tough part with conversation sometimes. Like, oh, I have this really good point. And sometimes you almost have to talk over somebody to get it out. Just so it's like, I, I needed to get that out. Sorry, what was your point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, it's, yeah. but it's, it's good, man. I mean, again, well, the whole point of having the conversation, right, is to, to be able to work on things. And mm -hmm. like, I'm, well, again, with the whole being locked away from everybody, like I, I spent most of this last winter hiding in my basement, mm -hmm. you know, partly some stuff was, you know, things that I needed to be introspective of and think and work on a little bit for some of it. But I, I was there for too long. Mm -hmm. And I knew it, you know, and I let my fitness fall apart. And then I actually started forcing myself to go out and socialize with people because I actually, I, my conversation yeah. skills were falling apart even. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy crap, I, I kind of did myself a disservice in a certain way too because mm -hmm. I, I didn't have enough interaction. I didn't, well, and I was intentionally basically trying to, to see things through a certain lens in, in a way, mm -hmm. you know, and how mm -hmm. I'm, I'm applying all this stuff to myself, my life, and then again, I get caught on my head for too long. And then I'll watch something like Letterkenny, mm -hmm. which is a lot like basically like the town I grew up in. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wait, life is really simple. Just, mm -hmm. you know, give your nuts a tug and move on with your life. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, sometimes it's that simple where you just need to, okay, well, am I going to worry if, if Mercury's in retrograde or am I just going to go get this work done and I need to get done today? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, and that, that comes to like empowerment as well. Like, um, and like tools that the resources that people have available to them because sometimes like i don't know it, it like also like has blown my mind in like uh, the transition transition process that I, I have been through um coming out of something similar where like i isolated myself and i was telling you about that um that coming out of that and like focusing on reclaiming my peace but also creating a healthier support circle mm -hmm. um what I found was like talking to other men in special um, because uh, the topic was like breaking up, you yeah. know, like what happens after a breakup. Um, and that was part of like um, the focus on reclaiming my peace and, and focusing on how I want to show up in the world mm -hmm. through also a healthy social circle. Um, and talking to another guy that had like, you know, like I, Girls were starting to show interest in me, even though I didn't want anything to do with girls at, at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, but they were showing interest in me, and I was talking to him about it, and like how like they were inviting me into their lives or whatever. Um, and then he was like, man, that's crazy. Because for me, it was only, had only been like maybe a month when like this started to happen. And he was like, it's been two years since 
I went through something similar. <laughs> and he still, you know, held back, stuck in this place. Yeah. Right? Because he, he doesn't have the same resources that I've had. He doesn't have the same, you know, I, I've developed myself to, to the extent that I have where, like, if something huge happens that can shake me to my core, when I have the right support system around me, I can bounce back, like, way faster. Yeah, and, and that makes it makes good so, sense too because, like you say, you have the equipment sort of thing to well, partly to move past it is where it sounds like he's stuck in a moment. Exactly, and and I have you know enough have had enough resources in my life and developed my social skills to a certain degree that naturally I I can tap into my my natural attractiveness and and not have to like be chasing necessarily you know know people for for like validation yeah but more so just be myself in front of certain people and whoever like clicks vibes yeah it naturally happens well that's what one thing that i was always confused about when i was younger is that well am i not good enough looking or am i not Mm -hmm. doing the right things in relationships or am i this that the other thing and it's like well, I'm already, I'm asking the wrong questions in the first place. Yeah. Right? It, it, the idea is that confidence is what's attractive, mm-hmm. not necessarily physical appearance. Mm-hmm. You know, like, don't be a complete slob, but at the same time, though, too, it's, people are attracted to personalities more than anything. Yeah. You know, and even, even guys that are just looking to hound attractive women and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like they still have to be able to connect on a, some level for, for anything yeah, to happen. Yeah, they have to be able to understand their reality. And that's, that's a huge part of like um, what my process out of that place where like I wasn't able to see my worth. I wasn't able to communicate my personality in the best, best way possible. Yeah. Uh, that's what I found also that I had to understand, you know, women's reality better as a way for me to not be so caught up in my own. Uh, you know, BS, because yeah. at the end of the day, that's one of the biggest struggles that guys have. Now that I've also taught some men uh, how to get out of that place um, and, you know, get better socially and with their dating lives, um, is that guys have a, like a huge issue getting in their heads. Yeah. And when you get in your head, you're minimizing your consciousness and your awareness to just inside your brain, like probably just a few electric shocks, you know, that are going on. Whereas when you're present, fully present, and you expand your consciousness to your body, to the space that you're in, the people that are within the space, then you can act more genuinely and express your yourself in a way that you are aware of yourself, not just yourself, but the other person. Yeah. And then that's where the magic happens when, when you know also what makes a conversation good, not what to say, yeah. but what makes a conversation dynamic and what can, you know, make a person feel like sharing more than, you know, other, they otherwise would. And it's not going to work with everyone, but yeah. as long as you're coming from that present state where like you're not caught up in here, but you're like feeling the space, then you're going to come from like the best place that you can at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's that whole strength of vulnerability kind of direction mm. sort of thing. Cause you're yeah. not only are you not afraid of failure, you're not overthinking what can go wrong. Yeah. You're just being there, being who you are, being the most present version. I was going to say the best version, but that's, that's not necessarily true either. It's just, you are there in that experience. You're in that moment. Yeah. And yeah. one of the biggest issues, honestly, that guys have in this realm, is that um, there's not enough like role models that exhibit you know the qualities that lead to an attractive man yeah um, and a wholesome attractive man you know because yeah. oftentimes guys start to realize that or they they see that the attractive man is the bad boy and then they go the whole complete opposite way yeah and then they might get some results but then they become toxic you know yeah well i also um, think I, and i'm not going to pretend like i i understand women at all yeah but i also have a feeling that's why 
older men and not old men necessarily, but a guy that's well, basically got their shit together and isn't acting like a child all the time. Yeah, that's what's more attractive to women. Definitely, right? and, and that's what like because uh, it's not about the money. It's not about the outwardly things. It's not the bit of white in the hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that also can be an illusion. And yeah. like, uh, just like immature men can afford superficial beauty, yeah. immature women can also fall for su- superficial signs of status and wisdom. Yeah. Right? Uh, and which could be the white hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. You know, right? the silver fox kind of archetype, right? Yeah. Uh, but you can exhibit the, the qualities of, of worth and status and um, attractiveness yeah. just by being more aware of yourself and cutting out the things. A lot of times it's just getting to the truth of the matter, like simplifying things and not overcomplicating. And a yeah. lot of times, um, yeah, like men are just so disempowered by themselves even yeah. because it, within other men, if you don't know what you're doing, it's like, come on, man, just man up. Like, go ask her out. You, oh, how do I do that? How do I come across? How do yeah. I... What What are the words? Like, give me a sentence to stay out of more. Uh, yeah. I don't, and, I don't, what's an icebreaker? Like, I, and, and, people, <laughs> and, and men are just like, oh, dude, just, just send it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. but I know, but they, no, most men don't actually know. And like, it's great that you say, like, I'm not going to pretend to know women because most men don't, don't even get close to and they pretend like they do and they like oversimplify yeah um you know and uh and that's like the biggest issue that like men themselves like hinder themselves by thinking that they know yeah when they don't and they should find out yeah which is i think probably again probably the most frustrating thing about the whole mansplaining thing. It's like, you don't even know what you're talking about. So why are you trying to explain shit to me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? And we, yeah, in and those contexts for sure. Yeah. And it's not just mm. men doing it to women. We do it to each other constantly. Mm. You're doing that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, you want to come over here and say it to my face? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? And yeah, then, no, and there's definitely a, uh, a way to, to be able to have those conversations and be uh, received well. You know, constructive criticism, right? Yeah, for sure. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, and it's and that goes back to the communication thing because, like, sometimes we create issues that would not have to be there if we just knew how to communicate better. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and I'm yeah. I know that I'm famous for basically having arguments and stuff like that in my head to practice basically before I actually go talk to somebody Mm -hmm. and almost always it's never what I expect it to be (laughs) but I'm basically like protecting myself and building a pseudo armor basically for this battle I'm about to fight Mm. then you know you walk out of the battlefield and you're standing there alone while everybody else is like in their shorts and sipping cocktails like Mm. what are you doing man like you're Mm. not here to fight you're here to talk with people and just hang out right yeah yeah yeah. you know and that's and that's such a weird a weird place to be because it's Mm. like well what am I constantly afraid of failure so badly but when I go and do things more often than not I learn so much and I actually enjoy myself when I learn something mm-hmm. so it's like why am I so constantly afraid of it yeah interesting right, it's weird but it, yeah, yeah, yeah I know no. I'm not the only one that does that kind no, of stuff no. <laughs> interestingly enough I've heard a few conversations with people like very, have a very similar experience because I feel like oftentimes people that are passionate about truth get like find themselves in that situation just because of the fact that they're like, I don't know if that's actually how it works. And like, I want to challenge your thought. Yeah. But oftentimes we're not necessarily equipped with the right, uh, ways of how to challenge thought. And oftentimes we can get caught up in our egos. And like, like you said, like we're not here to fight. We're here to enjoy each other. And like, yes, it's good to, you know, challenge each other's thought, but like, we're not here to, like we're here to enjoy ourselves. Like, yeah, let's do it. Like, well, and I think part of that stems from embarrassment, and partly being the youngest in my family, sort of thing too. But mm. it, it's when you, I, I found at least when I was in my early twenties, I'd have an opinion about something, but I have zero information to back it up, mm. and I wouldn't be able to explain myself properly. Mm. Even. Mm. So, and then you get embarrassed, and then they, people start asking you questions and shooting holes through everything you say, and it's like, wow, I actually don't know what I'm talking about at all. Mm-hmm. so you start doing the research but it also gets to the point where okay well, so now <laughs> I'm doing so much and I'm trying to learn so much that 
how much of this is even going to be functional or will I even be able to talk about this to anybody or mm. whatever sort of thing like that or yeah or am I going way too deep into something that nobody even gives a shit about yeah <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm glad you know your stuff but you're really boring now because of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah right? yeah like it's almost like a like a late retaliation you know like yeah. let me show you how much I know because before I didn't know yeah um, and I yeah I can, I can some of it's see. definitely compensation. Well, and some of it yeah. definitely yeah. because I'm the youngest of four boys, and I was always the smallest, slowest, dumbest one in the family, hmm. right? And that yeah. that yeah. I still work on some of that. Mm-hmm. Truth be told, like I, mm-hmm. it's it's something that it's it's definitely not as big a part of my life, but I also understand that out exterior validation is not the way to live a life, mm-hmm. and I don't need that. It yeah. feels good sometimes and it's enjoyable, but at the same time, I, I don't need it to exist. Mm-hmm. That's where yeah. I think if I'd have been, if I would have went hard into performing arts and stuff like that, I would probably have really bad psychological problems because every time I didn't get a part or every time mm-hmm. I got a bad review, it would hit yeah. me way harder. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Is where now doing this kind of stuff, I don't give a shit who sees it on the internet. Yeah. Shoot holes through it. Please do. Like yeah. I actually kind of, yeah, yeah. I I'd need the criticism yeah. sort of thing like that as opposed to, mm-hmm. yeah, being constantly afraid of something that I, I may not even happen. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, so. and that's the quality that like I really started to, to honor, you know, and I think that that's one of the things that like, it's a, like a benchmark for like people that I keep in my life. Um, it's just that you have to be able to like, be open to people shooting holes through your whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, and you probably notice it because you have quite a few followers on, on Instagram. And it's like you could have an amazing whatever, something that you took time to concisely think about and lay out well. And you get like a thousand likes on it, but you get two comments that say, oh, you're fucking dumb or whatever sort of thing. <laughs> it doesn't matter how much praise you got. It's like, that really got to me. Yeah. Well, what are you doing? Like, who, those, who are you? Those comments <laughs> are interesting sometimes um, because I, I almost see it as a challenge to um, prove them wrong in some sort of way if I can, in like in a quick or, way. Yeah, or if sometimes just to understand why they would say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I, I'm like, why would this person like just, I don't know, or like try and, you know shoot me down like that and so like I've become really good at like handling those those situations because my nature has always been to be that challenger of thought that like um and so people have come at me um you know especially when I talk about like people having babies and how ethically wrong it can be considered to be in this world that we haven't even figured out for ourselves and we just want to keep bringing people in some people get really triggered by that because yeah. they're like, oh, but how could you tell me that I can't have kids? It's not my what I said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it becomes that, right? Yeah. Uh, but I've, I've, because of that, because I've had those conversations and like expressed, you know, like my thoughts publicly, I've had people being like that. And so like more and more, like just learn how to like deal with those people and like, yeah. yeah. But I think that's also important is because not just for the the sake of them having a conversation with you about it sort of thing, but to to challenge thought. Like, why why are you having such an emotional response to mm. this? Yeah, you know, and it, and that's that's a great thing to have. Okay, so now that you say that, I'm gonna share a quote that's very relevant to that actually, because it's Aristotle: an educated mind is able to entertain a thought without agreeing with it. Yes, and it goes back to education once again and the place that people are coming from is an uneducated place not they could know a lot of things actually in actuality but it an educated person that is uneducated about the human experience is gonna try and like hurt someone that they don't even know yeah just because they feel entitled to it just because maybe they you know, they're not educated in that area of life. You know, they're not self-aware enough. They maybe don't have the tools to build a good, good self-esteem, a good self-image, or healthy relationships. And then they take it out on something else, right? Yeah. So, it goes yeah. back to that uneducated mind and the way that education has to change. 
Yeah, well, that's... It's always weird, too, because the the way that confidence and, and education or level of intellect or lack of ignorance, I guess, probably is a better way to, to say it. Mm-hmm. How... Well, again, back kind of kind of back to the men picking up women kind of thing like that. Mm. You know, like confident guys, a lot of times are dipshits. But, you know, you see them picking up women out of mm. nightclubs and stuff all the time is where somebody that's smart will sit there and overthink it and never talk to a girl at all, all yeah. night. Right? And that's exactly exactly that kind of thing where mm. shit happens all the time. Yeah. And, and like it's, it's ironic when that happens because it's like, you can have knowledge, but understanding and embodiment are like closer to true expression than just having the knowledge aspect of it. Well, that's what wisdom is, right? Yeah, definitely. Knowledge yeah. is great, but well, like the internet is filled with knowledge. How much yeah. wisdom does it actually possess, though? Uh, I have a quote for that, but I, I, I didn't rehearse for this. Or <laughs> so I, I can't remember it word for word. Yeah, but, but I mean, one of those books. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's like, all, well, a lot of those uh, ancient philosophers, like Plato, apparently wasn't all that smart of a person, mm-hmm. comparably. Mm-hmm. But he just asked questions, and that's apparently that's why he got murdered for, is because yeah. he was asking <laughs> too many questions. Yeah. But and that's the thing is that's the idea of challenging thought yeah. is to have the ability to say, well, why do you think that way? Mm-hmm. Well, why is it this way? Well, why is it a problem? Okay, yeah. well, what's your solution to that problem? Yeah, and, and doing that from the heart is basically what I feel like people need to learn how to do more. Yeah. Um, to avoid, you know, coming out of a conversation and being like, that was rough. That was like, you know, and instead coming out of the conversation being like, that was cool. Like, I learned something. He learned, like, they learned something, you know, like, yeah. um, and we both came out of it understanding each other more with our awareness being able to encompass more understand more yeah you know yeah that's what it should be but it doesn't happen because oftentimes we're so caught up here that we're not even feeling you know from the heart if we feel from the heart we can tell you know what we're thinking of the other person we're not just here we're just we're feeling out into the world yes but and the other side of that same coin would be that you're kind of too caught up in your emotions mm. where you're yeah, well, where you're unable to form the questions because you're kind of almost pe- being attacked so you're not really sure yeah, why think, why that kind of I, I get what you're saying I think yeah. that's still coming from the mind oh for um, sure it is yeah, because you're well it's where the fight or flight thing kind of pops in because somebody's criticizing somebody about something at work or whatever let's say and mm-hmm. instead of them being able to to calmly keep themselves in check sort of thing like that and say, well, why do you think, say that? Mm-hmm. Why do you think it's this way? Yeah. Well, why should I be doing this? Why shouldn't we all be doing this? Yeah. Or why, what makes you think that you're in control? Uh-huh. You know, like we're all in the same level of employment here or whatever sort of thing like that. Like, and that's, well, talking to Miss Mueller's actually was, was a big part of it because she was doing construction and she basically had to give it up because of her being a female and in, in construction. It's difficult. Mm-hmm. And understandably, but... She would tell me about some of these situations. It's like, well, if I, that was me, I would have asked him this, and then I asked him that, and asked him this. And that's usually what it is, is when people start getting frustrated, it's so much easier to stay calm and let them get angry. And then if you start laughing at them, they get even more angry. Mm. You know, and it's obviously way easier said than done. I know that. Mm. But it took me a long time to, to refine that to a point where I can... I don't know, weaponize it, it probably is not the right way to say it, but at the same time to be to be comfortable with where I am in my knowledge of what I'm doing. And even if I don't know something, be okay with saying that. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and that's the thing that, like, I, I was going to say, like, I, like, oftentimes we don't have our hearts and minds working together. Yeah. Um, and that's part of the issue, right? Because, like, I, I myself, like, I may seem like a chill dude, uh, but I can experience emotions very passionately. That's also what allowed me to, you know, be an artist and a musician yep. in, in the way that I am. Um, but um, in my personal life, I've had to learn how to, like, m- make my, my heart and my mind work as a team um, and how to sometimes control my fire 
uh, a lot of times through compassion actually so a lot of times whenever I feel some sort of like triggering emotion I, I try to use my mind to be like okay now is the time to practice compassion especially if I'm getting caught up in something that's like anger you know or like sadness or like some sort of negative emotion that's lingering especially when it's like lingering and I'm like killing myself over it in a sense and like oh or like you know and now I've started to to realize I'm like okay now I have to practice compassion because I can either be compassionate towards the person or myself or the situation and all those things are every time have helped me and I've grown so much through compassion that it's crazy yeah. but it took me you know learning through like sometimes hurting people that I love unfortunately yep uh, you know well and the so, shitty part is too is that a lot of the time anger hurts you more than it hurts the person you're angry at because a lot of the time especially if they eventually they yeah because you can hurt the person enough that they don't want to be in your life anymore and then yeah you or, lose a valuable person yeah or yeah you're angry at something that they don't even care about and it's like well yeah. it doesn't affect them at all and you're still angry so you're yeah. really the only one that's being affected by yeah it. That, that context <laughs> definitely as well yeah right. and that's and that's a tough one to get past because it's like well no it should be this way it's like why does it matter yeah yeah oh yeah why does it matter yeah and, and sometimes <laughs> it's like you want things to be a certain way and then you lose compassion because you're like no it's got it like why isn't it this way you know but yeah. No, not everything can be the way that you want it to be. And like, yeah, no, it's a, it's a tough lesson to learn sometimes. But yeah, compassion is, is amazing for like helping you deal with those situations as well. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's what I've, I've kind of turned that into like a, a gentle fuck you to people sometimes <laughs> where they're, yeah, you, they get mad at work or whatever sort of thing. And somebody explodes about something. It's like. Are you all right? Is everything okay, okay at home? And like, yeah. Like, are you, is it really this big a deal that you have to have this kind of emotional response? It works well, though. Like, <laughs> oh, and it—that's the thing. That's like, because you say calm down to somebody, they're, tep- they're not going to calm down. Yeah. But if like you want to push their buttons a little bit harder, and it's like if you want to really go for it, then go for it. Like, show me what you got. But mm-hmm. it's like you're not affecting me again. Like you're yeah. angry by yourself. Yeah. No. And, <laughs> but what I found—I don't know if you found this by like doing that, but I found sometimes. Um, when I do it from a genuine place because sometimes yeah you can use it to like push a button right but uh, when I take a step back and I'm like okay what was that person just like irrational almost you know like or like going way over the top about something that shouldn't be you know I actually take a step back and I like try and feel them and then then I'm like is everything okay like what's going on yeah and then the the attitude the energy changes completely and it transforms the interaction to one that could be even more heated to one that is creates understanding and creates you know yeah something well, more I, positive yeah and I think that's uh, the other good part is when you have time to think about it and you're willing to if you have the opportunity to go back to that same person it's like mm. I didn't think about what I was saying from your point of view mm-hmm. that was unfair what I said Mm-hmm. or I wasn't aware of your emotional state at the time or what you were going through or exactly, yeah, I don't yeah. know what your story is. Exactly. It opens up the conversation to all those things and then, right. yeah, it creates understanding. Yeah, and that's typically what it is is that it, everybody's going to have some level of emotional response because of something that happens to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. It's, it's being able to say, it's like, okay, I had an explosion. Was it justified? If it was, great, but I could still talk to this person because exactly. it's like, I can still do this in a better way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. and that's and I've had, I mean, construction is a constant pissing contest. It's a bunch of guys just trying to be the best of everybody all the time, sort of thing like that. And and I've got mad at people that I've had to go apologize to. But the nice thing about it is, a lot of the time, if somebody's willing to work with you or understand you, everything's better after that. You know, because they've they've had an explosion themselves, yeah. and they they had to walk something back before or whatever sort of thing like that too. So it's it's that idea of understanding, but 
also understanding that forgiveness is a huge part of something that we just don't do anymore. And and that's what compassion is basically, right? Yeah, totally. Like, like acknowledging that like maybe this person isn't just coming after me or the situation, but if there's something behind it that we might be able to also empathize with because a lot of times we have way more in common than we think we do. Oh, for sure, yeah. People, right? When yeah. we actually take the time to be like, what's going on? Instead of being like retaliating or like trying to push a button or like, you know, like that kind of thing. So yeah, no, it's, it, compassion has been like a, a great, great way for me to um, handle my emotional intensity. Cause I, I also don't let a lot of people see it, right? Like it's the thing that like, um, yeah, only the closest people to me. Cause to most people I may seem like, you know, a chill person, maybe a bit crazy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but never necessarily like, um, like overly angry or like overly sad, you know. Yeah. But I can experience those emotions very intensely. Um, yeah, and. Well, the thing that I frighten myself with anger is how. Well, I always think actually call it powerful. It made me feel, but it's not just powerful. It makes me feel righteous. And that's a scary, bad feeling when you're angry is that it's just like, not only do I feel like I'm empowered by my thoughts and my, Hmm. my emotions in this, but it's like, I can only be right right now. Yeah. And that's, that's a terrible way to to look at it. No, but it's like, it's so easy to get caught up in it. If you, if you don't know the the solution, right? right? If you know the solution, which oftentimes is just as simple as knowing how compassion works and how to remind right. yourself. Yeah. You and, then, and something simple like traffic, uh-huh. you know, lost my mind on somebody because of, you know, road rages everybody gets at some point, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But, it, and you think about it, it's like, okay, hold on. Maybe this person had a perfect driving record and today their mind was somewhere else. And this is the first time they've actually made a mistake or they cut a line or didn't signal or something like that. Yeah. And I just happened to be there and I'm having a shitty day yeah. and I just lost my shit. Yeah. So again, it's like, I don't know their story. I don't know their situation. Calm yeah. down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's because it, sometimes emotional reactions are inevitable, right? Like you said, right? Like you, you could have also had a stressful day, you know, and your reaction is going to be like, you know, the days when I'm able to be like, oh, that person probably had a bad day compared to the, <laughs> the times when I'm like, you know, what the fuck is this person, you know, like thinking or like blah 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 and yeah. I have to catch myself are definitely related to how stressful my life and day is that day yeah right so for certain yeah yeah mm-hmm. you need something okay just wondering if you wanted to jump in or not <laughs> what does that mean no oh, okay <laughs> okay no. yeah but I mean that's that was also the the thing with not just well road rage is always a great example but I mean we're already in a unnatural heightened state when you're driving for one Mm. but i mean the other part of it is too is that it's not a it's it's not a small thing because of that like some people don't seem to realize like how dangerous it is to drive Mm. and they they just drive with no care or concern or zero courtesy for Mm -hmm. anybody else Mm -hmm. they don't realize like how dangerous their their actions can be so it's like sometimes i kind of feel justified in that anger but it, again it's like I'm not going to pull them over and try to talk to them about it I mean if I did would I be able to compose myself properly to say that was really dangerous you got to be more attentive to what you're doing mm-hmm. sort of thing and would it fall on deaf ears is the other thing mm-hmm. so yeah. really again if I'm the only one that's angry inside of my car screaming and I love seeing that when you see somebody like driving down the road and you see them just losing their mind it's their windows are rolled up you can't hear them their own their, their own little world sort of thing like that yeah. and that's that's all there is and, yeah. but that's again that's kind of part of the problem is that when somebody gets a piece of glass between them and the rest of the world that's all there is is just them in that car yeah yeah and that's a great metaphor for like also like social media right like it's yeah. a piece of glass and you know like you're in your little box there like on the other side so you can't yeah you know? well that's exactly it I don't half the time when I read the stuff that you're th- you're saying I don't think of you as a person. 
I think of the words that, that are written there that I'm reading, mm. which is the stupidest thing. And it's actually kind of an epiphany I'm just having now. Mm. When I think about it, it's just like, I know this guy. Why am I frustrated about what he's typed here? Or why am I going to sit here and try to shoot holes through this stuff without actually talking to the guy about stuff? Yeah. You know, like it's so dumb because it's like, I like him. Like, what am I doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And that's, and that's just it. Again, I don't know your entire life experience. So, like, you're, you're saying these things for a certain reason or yeah. whatever it is sort of thing. And, and only that, if it's giving me this kind of a response, what does that say about me? Yeah. Right? What yeah, do I have yeah. to work on? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. So. It, it's, yeah, and it's, and again, it's that being able to take that time to take a step back. What am I actually doing? What yeah. am I looking at? What am I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and that, that's why I feel like right now is the perfect time to have this conversation because it's so related to so many things, um, not just for ourselves, yeah. you know, but for most people, you know, that like are looking for answers, looking for truth, um, and uh, and looking for for like the genuine side of people because at the end of the day like you said like sometimes we might read something and be like why I'm, why are they saying this first and why am I having this reaction if maybe this person isn't actually this yeah everything that's involved in what's happening from this one little sentence or thing or whatever right um, yeah because I think people people at the end of the day want to be in a state of harmony and bliss. You know, the only people that don't, they've had some shit in their life that like has made them resentful in some sort of way. Like where you're saying, you we don't know what's happened in someone's life, but usually hurt people hurt people. Right? Yes. So and, and it's that tension again, that state of where you're reacting to things from. If you're having a shitty life, shitty day, shitty everything or at least you have that perspective even, you know, yeah. you could have a decent life, but if you're having that perspective and that's your reality, then you're going to take that out. You're going to react to things in a certain way. And whereas like, if you had, you know, like internal peace, relational harmony, you know, like different things in your life that like make you feel great. If something comes at you, you're going to approach it from a way different place. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's been a, an issue with trying to nerf the whole world is that adversity is going to come to people no matter what. Mm -hmm. So trying to, at, at, to a degree, yes, the world can be softer in certain ways, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean we have to make softer people though either. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, well, it's like uh, JFK's speech about um, space travel. Yeah. In the sixties, he kind of touches it like in that direction of, I mean, it's a little dated, but I'll, I'll, I'll update it a bit is that the idea we shouldn't try for better lives or easier lives. We should try to be stronger people. You know, it's interesting that you say that actually, because when we think about strength and anger, for example, you said, you know, it makes me feel powerful and you do kind of get powerful in a sense, but you're also like weaker and they put yeah, the blinders you're weaker. On. yeah, you're weaker in a sense as yeah. well. So who is stronger? The person who gets triggered by someone else or the person who remains in, in, in control? Yeah. You know? So in that sense, true strength comes from compassion. Yeah. That's you actual know? strength. Yeah. That's actual strength. Yeah. Because you're you're receiving this attack, this, you know, adversity, unwanted situation. And you're strong enough to not let your ego get in the way. And you're strong enough to take everything that is involved in the situation into account and act upon it. Yeah. Rather than weak enough to just be set off or be like led by your emotions and yeah. be like powerful in the sense that you know, your righteousness makes you believe that your emotions are completely valid regardless of what the situation is. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's the bad way to try to justify a point of view anyways. Yeah. Because you're, well, literally ready to fight for it, whether it's with words or physically mm -hmm. at that point, because you're, uh, yeah, clouding your judgment, clouding your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, it's one direction. 
and like that's why I did the put the blinders on kind of thing like yeah. that. It's like no, I'm right, and there's nothing else that could be right. And literally, when you get angry, because I like, like I said, I had to do some work on myself, watch a tech talk um, and on anger. Yeah. And literally, the scientific response that your body has to anger is it shuts off your logical brain. Yeah. Well, it's a fight or flight response. Yeah. Exactly, straight up. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it. Well, yeah. Anger. It. Uh, it takes away uh, thought power. It takes away digestion. It takes away sex drive. Because it's in that fight or flight response, it's mm. focusing your your blood into your muscles and and not really anything else in your head, even. Mm. And it's yeah, it's a it's a primal reaction is what it is. Mm. Yeah. It's, so you you are weakening all your senses in a sense, you know, like yeah. you're just fo- like, yeah. Yeah, and that's well, and that's the reason why we're on top of the food chain, is that we thought our way out of things. We didn't have to exactly. be, be Exactly, yeah, that's true. That's true, very true. So yeah, in that sense, yeah, there's, their true strength is not in like, like forceful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of what I, I think about the, the whole idea of the next step of evolution. Like we can't evolve without technology. And instead mm-hmm. of us fighting against well, because we're we, we're becoming smarter than we can evolve to a match, so mm-hmm. we need technology to help help us keep our minds and stuff together. Like like our phones are basically mm-hmm. like a third hemisphere of our brain. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard like I heard a neuroscientist talk about that, and it's like that makes a lot of sense because we we have more knowledge and more capability than what we can physically do even. Yeah. And our minds, like your brain, is something that fits inside your head, but our minds right now are connected. Mm-hmm. And if somebody watches this later. They're, well, they're, will connect to their minds, mm. you know, and then all of a sudden you have, like you talked about earlier about this consciousness, this global consciousness that's fitting together and it's becoming mm. larger and closer all the time. Mm. But for us to get beyond just what that is to the next level of the, like the great filter, as scientists call it, is like we need to become some level of mechanical human sort of thing like that mm-hmm. some sort of cyborg for us almost to, to actually truly evolve to the next stage of life and mm-hmm. every time they talk about the great filter it's always on that and I've I say this almost every time I think is that it's that idea that every time life as we understand it evolved to its next stage it's mm-hmm. because of cooperation mm-hmm. right it went from basically inor- inorganic matter as far as we know to organic matter because something got together Mm. went from singular life to multicellular life because things got together like the mitochondria became part of a cell mm. to become a multicellular organism and grow from there mm. you know we started getting more and more complex to the point where sentience became something mm. but society wouldn't work if we wouldn't have got together we'd still be on small tribes like chimps are mm. you know so every time we cooperate we evolve yeah you know, and I think that's that's going to be our next step of evolution is that we have to cooperate more. Yeah, and that's exactly what, like, you know, like Why we started education. kind of, kind of talking about, like, you know, that unity and growth of consciousness that comes through education, through people creating understanding, right? And that's all leading toward cooperation. So that's what I'm saying. Like, this yeah. is like the time when this conversation needs to happen because. That's what we need. We need yeah. to be grounded in what is outside of bias as much as we can because, like, you know, everyone comes from a different place and, like, everyone has to let go of different biases than, you know, the yeah. other. Well, what do you think, but, in your opinion, what do you think hum- humans as a species are? Like, because we're, we're definitely a super organism. Like, comparably, like, you look at an anthill, that's a full, well structured society. Hmm. An individual ant is kind of useless. But what they do together is amazing. Yeah. And you see, like, sometimes, like, a two-foot-tall pile that it's taken them years, possibly, to, to build. Uh-huh. But it couldn't have been done by a single ant. Yeah. So how, how do you feel, like, what what are humans uh-huh. in that kind of sense? Because or what are we striving towards, I guess, is probably more, more a succinct question. Because we're all, individually, we're all kind of our own little bag of problems and mm-hmm. somewhat so inconsequential. What so what, what, are, are, what is, yeah, like what is the human race? Like what are we going towards in your opinion? Towards? Or building or what are we, what are we to the planet even? Well, the, the thing that we are to the planet right now is more like a parasite. 
more than a symbiotic uh, organism. Um, yeah, to it somewhat. Yeah, well, because we we've like invaded territories, you know, drawn resources, affected ecosystems. Yeah. Uh, you know, made some species go extinct. Those are our qualities of like parasites. For sure. You know, but parasites don't build cities and fly to different planets. And stuff. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, but like we have, we have very like parasitic qualities, you know, within yeah. that realm of existence, right? Because we can inter- intellectualize and like uh, construct and build way more complex things than parasites could, right? So that's yeah. the the interesting thing because we started more off yeah. as like kind of symbiotic beings and like that's what like a lot of native tribes tried to strive for symbiotic existence a lot of yeah. native north american and south american uh culture and way of living was in alignment with a symbiotic existence yeah you know? we're finding the equilibrium exactly yeah. that balance right um so that's that's what i mean because like the the general state of humanity within its economy and like everything that surrounds that um, it's very like subtract subtract conquer you know take not so much focus on that giving yeah aspect well somewhat because life in general it is about doesn't matter what no, I know, but there's that but, balance, right? So, right, but the other... So, it's the balance that determines that the state of harmony. Okay, so... I feel. yeah. Next question, then, is who should die? Who should die? Right, because everything else basically finds an equilibrium, and we have enough technology to keep even the weak alive. Yeah. So, does that mean we should start reducing the population, or at least not, not expanding it the way we do? Well, I think reducing is probably if, not the right if, way to it. If we <laughs> if we gave parents, um, like a requirement to be a parent that they have to go through training courses, um, I feel like not as many people would want to be parents. It, it would also restrict, like people's freedom in a sense, which is something that people would definitely backlash. Oh, uh, for over. sure. But. Um, that in itself would ensure that the people who are being parents would actually do a great job and it would also reduce the amount of people that would want to be parents yeah um, possibly but that also kind of falls into the I'll wait till I'm ready but some people that should have kids would never have kids then too I mean so, I guess but when we're talking about population issues and like like the question well, that we're raising yeah um, yeah that's kind of what comes to mind because yeah, I mean, there's so many people in this world that that question like almost has to be asked. Because like, what if, what if, you know, we do make the changes that we need to do, we are able to create abundance for everyone. Then what? We're going to procreate like rabbits even more, perhaps. Yeah. You know, but there's also the thing that happens where like the more educated that a society is, the more unwanted pregnancy that there also is. Which has been a, a number that has uh, been found to a point, because I think it's Bangladesh. I'm pretty sure that they their education and it's been like within a lifetime, basically, that their country went from um, like third world or I don't know if we're allowed to say that anymore, even. But mm-hmm. basically, a bottom tier kind of country to a, like an almost fully industrialized country within fifty or sixty years or something, mm-hmm. and education's been a massive part of that. And they've gone from having like seven kids to the 2.5 average, sort of thing like that. And a big part of that's educating women. Because when women yeah. are smarter, they have more opportunity and they can provide yeah. for society better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they understand things better. Yeah. And, yeah. and and it makes sense. Like, again, education yeah. is typically the solution. Yeah. Right? So we could naturally reduce population by doing so. And I know... I asked a very pointed question to say who should die, but <laughs> at the same time, though, too, well, to find equilibrium has to be done somehow, though. And I think maybe the question also can be flipped and say who should live. Yeah. Because the thing is, through education, 
I find that people, the most educated people that I have met, question highly if they want to have kids or not. Yeah. They very like they're very very you know like. I don't know. I'd have to find someone that like I would be for sure, you know. Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt, know that like not only would I want to have a kid with them because I'm attracted with them, to them. Yeah. But also that we would be good parents together, and that we would keep our own baggage outside of it in the process to a certain degree. Yeah, or well, deal with it in constructive and ways. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, so yeah, I feel like asking who should live would come would become a more prominent question within the mind of an educated person. Yeah. And and hence, you know, reduce the population naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the other part of it. I mean, they would have. I think because Bangladesh, I'm fairly certain, was the the one that I was watching about it. But mm-hmm. I mean, the idea that yeah, in less less industrialized countries have to have that many kids because upwards of 50% of them will die. Mm -hmm. So you have to have seven kids just so that three of them might make it to adulthood. Yeah. So that's the other part of it too. And that's, Mm -hmm. I mean, well, yeah, like our, our life expectancy within a hundred years has gone up by almost twofold. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty significant. Yeah. So, and that, and that's a huge, huge help for a lot of things, but at the same time, it's also creating issues that we're not ready for like by 2050 like a third of the world's population will be retirement age yeah how are we going to deal with that many old people <laughs> yeah right yeah that's the thing like, like we we haven't thought about right and that's the thing that like i saw becoming an issue like years ago because like i don't know i just had a feeling like the way the numbers were going it was it wasn't adding up to perfection it was adding up to a lot of issues that we haven't fully accounted for mm-hmm. and it almost makes me think that you know that simpsons have you ever seen that simpsons episode where the world is ending oh. um and <laughs> and all the elite um put together a group of people like almost like noah's ark yeah but but on a spaceship and yeah. lisa like gets invited and she gets a plus one yeah um i i kind of think that in realistic terms like that's why people are investing so much on Elon Musk's like uh, idea of colonizing Mars, um, because I don't know if they they think that like it's gonna get better either, and they're like they're probably getting ready to like head out of here when when like shit hits the fan. Yeah, that could be part of it. <laughs> I I mean I think there's also that exploratory pioneering spirit that it kind of will yeah. always be a part yeah. of us yeah yeah is part of it but i also i mean obviously it's simpsons they're, they're making because <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> i'm pretty sure there was two ships and the other one was flying into the sun yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah um so yeah no i and it, it's come true like you know the simpsons haven't you know, necessarily been wrong. They've predicted the future quite a few times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm yeah. Just saying. Well, and I, I, I think that that it's a good idea to be an interplanetary species for several reasons. The big one is like the whole idea of the all your eggs in one basket. Like, mm-hmm. say, there's a, a large meteor strike or a nuclear war or mm-hmm. whatever happens, sort of thing like that. All humanity has to basically start from scratch again. Yeah, the only issue with that is, so, like, only the privilege, like, you know, like, we've, we've alluded with the Simpsons uh, example, yeah. only the, the, the most privileged would get access to that uh, out. You know? Not at the start. The start would mostly be science, scientists and, and uh, engineers and construction to, Perhaps, to, to build yeah. those things, or... Machines that, that start building colonies for if us or something like that. If shit doesn't hit the fan before all that stuff gets for the sure, job, right? Because if, sure. if shit hits the fan, I feel like they're bringing the scientists and all those people and the themselves. Yeah. You know, because it's only survival of the fittest. Yeah. So well, but to a degree, I mean, I'm pretty sure the the Sierra Mountains have like huge caverns and stuff like that, and they can support like a hundred thousand people inside of a mountain. Mm-hmm in case there is something large that happens where at least society, like human 
kind will at least won't fully disappear at least. Mm -hmm. Um, but with that said though, too, I mean, there's, there's also a lot of things that I think we can learn about ourselves if we go other places. Like if we, if we figure out how to live on the moon in a, in one of the dark, um, craters or something like that. So we can, well, be safe from direct contact from the sun basically because, you know, our, our magnetosphere is a huge reason why we're alive right now. <laughs> but with that said though too I mean if we start solving problems there we might be able to figure out how to solve other problems here mm -hmm. same thing with Mars if we figure out how to do things better there maybe we'll be able to do things better here then as well mm -hmm. or Venus let's say because yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the different kind of environments and contexts yeah. Yeah. yeah and we could yeah, and we don't maybe because it's partly that we're we're looking at a problem only one way and we cannot we can't really see it until we start going to other planets to figure out oh this is a consistent problem with planets this is this is the thing that needs to change not this other thing we thought yeah right so yeah there's... i could see that like on a scientific level like maybe production level but i don't i don't know if it would happen like fast enough for like, oh no but that's that we need to, that's, that's exactly why musk was yeah. his uh pushing for this kind of stuff because his his heart was broken when not only the space shuttle program was canceled but him trying to make rockets and stuff like that was shit on by like neil armstrong like directly mm -hmm. And he almost started, well, he cried during an interview. He's like, I really wish they would just come and see what we're doing here. Like, these guys are my heroes. And you can see, like, he was just welling up with tears. Like, I'm starting to just thinking about it because it's like, yeah. Like, he has this vision of why the future has to be so fraught with so many problems on one planet when we can expand and be abundant and thrive in other parts of our own solar system. Yeah. To grow and to be more, to be better. Yeah. Sort of thing. And... And I know, like, the other part of the argument is, like, well, why are we going to other planets? We need well, to fix this one. Fix this one. <laughs> and it, but it, the other, other part is, too, is, like, well, there's, what, seven and a half billion people on the planet? I'm pretty sure we can do more than one thing at a time, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean the population <laughs> so, is getting big enough that we can, you know. For sure, right? We can be like, okay, let's take some people from here and move them here while we figure, keep figuring out shit here and then you know, thrive here in a different way, but kind of similar. So I feel like, yeah, there's there's some possibilities there, I think. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I mean, people just need to watch this podcast. And we'll, we've already <laughs> solved half the world's yeah, problems. So. We, we, we got it, man. We just got to hope that people would just listen. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, that's, that, that's kind of the, I think, the, the big driver that someone like Musk is oddly by himself. Yeah. Because not only is he doing that, he's trying to make... Well, he's making electric vehicles to help reduce carbon footprint, which it's at the moment it's kind of just pushing the bottleneck to a different place. But at least he's going in the right direction. You know, he's doing all these things with his money. It was where most billionaires are doing it to have a joyride to space. They're not yeah. doing it for any reason. Or, I mean, these oil sheiks that we don't even hear about in the Middle East that are easily as rich as Elon Musk is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are they doing with their money? They're not doing anything other than sitting basically on a large pile of gold. They don't do anything with their money either, mm -hmm. as far as I know, right? Like, there, there's enough technology and ability and ingenuity to, to make things happen. I mean, yeah. they said it'd only take something like 20 to $40 billion to, to build a moon base, mm -hmm. which is fuck all because Elon Musk just bought Twitter for $43 billion, mm -hmm. right? So, and it's going to probably get to that point where it's like, if nobody's going to do this because bureaucracy is too slow, I'll do it all myself then. Mm -hmm. Which obviously, I mean, one man's not going to do everything yeah. by himself, yeah, but it's just too. like, we're going to do this together. Yeah. Every, and everybody well, that wants to come along, please do. Well, that's part of like, well, how I came up with the awakened elite concept. Yeah. Um, because I saw, you know, the philosopher King concept is a little bit too far-fetched. It's a little bit too... Uh, drastic of a change but if more people like you know Elon Musk um, that are you know somewhat more aware of some of the greater issues and have the ability to make some substantial change because of their economic position in the world then shit would actually get done yeah so so the awakened elite concept is mostly that that like if we get enough elite people to get on the same page as for example people like Elon Musk and maybe you know I don't know enough so like I'd have to find out more about all all the initiatives you know but if 
though the ones that I know of are great. Yeah. Like what you're saying, right? Um, so yeah, if we got enough elite people that are sitting on a lot of money to you know flip the light switch on and get on the same page, that's when shit would happen. Yeah. So so that's why yeah I I basically came up with that because there's people that are completely asleep. And those people, those elite that are asleep and are not awakened, yeah, and continue to not be awakened, um, will be labeled a certain way, whereas the the elite that come out of that sleep and like wake up or so to speak, are gonna be put in another category. So the elite, this is something that I have in the back of my book. It's like uh, the elite have two choices: eternal glory. Or eternal damnation. Yeah. Yeah, and then how many billionaires or whatever in the world that haven't done anything? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing too. Like, I never even really thought about it. Like the, the the talk of someone like Musk. It's like, oh, he's the richest man in the world. It's like, really? Because I'm pretty sure the Queen of England owns countries. Yeah. She owns countries. Yeah. Like, she's in the in the trillions at that point. Then. Yeah. You know, and it, it's like, oh, well, they don't really do anything. It's like, don't they? Yeah. Like, they, yeah. don't, they don't have influence still? Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. Like, that <laughs> amount of money, like, how could you not? Well, yeah. You know? Well, and even yeah. when they come to Canada on our own dollar, basically, and it's like, yeah, let's go tour the colonies, shall we? You know, so they come out for a trip and people line up to just like, oh, maybe I'll be close enough to maybe touch one of them or something or, you know, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. What good is all that wealth if all you're going to do is sit in your exactly, castle? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I, so, I agree, man. <laughs> yeah, so, so we're getting to that point, and I saw it. That's why I wrote it, you know, that way, because I saw it either, like, categorizing the elites in two places. Like, it's that simple. It's not going to get any more complex. Yeah. It's either you're going to get labeled through eternal damnation, like you're going to be just the scum of the earth kind of thing, or you're going to step up with all your wealth and do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. very important. I agree, mm-hmm. man, because that's... Yeah. There's so much that can be done. And that's the, the frustrating part is we have the ability, the technology to do a lot of these things. Yeah. But because people don't see the profit in it, we don't do them. Yeah, and, and you know, that's actually one of the, the issues within like trying to reform the government because... We're going to the middle man, you yeah. know, and so to speak, because the government is not really the top man. Like yeah. they, they want us to believe that they're the top man, but we're going to the middle man. Yeah. You know, so that's the difficult part, the, the way that the system works, because, you know, let's say, let's say consciousness grows, unifies to the extent that it needs to. And, and we do get enough people hold, trying to hold the governments accountable. We're, we're still going to the middleman. Yeah. So they might be able to do something about it if enough people unify, but there, there's already bylaws against protesting. You know, there's been like things that have been put in place so that we are even prevented from going to the middleman. Yeah. So now we have to find a way not only to get to the middle man, but get to the top man, which is, which are the elites that have the money. And and I don't know if uh, if uh, going to the the government is gonna be enough pressure for them to decide: do we want to be in eternal damnation or do we want to be in eternal glory? You know, yeah. because. Like, like I said, like, that's where, what it comes down to when it comes down to, like, the worst case scenario, right? Which is something that we have to kind of, like, start thinking of and preparing for because it's, like, only, like, less than a few decades away, right? Yeah. Um, no, that's very true. And that, one, well, like we had talked about before, I mean, politicians are not, for whatever reason, not the best sampling of human humankind. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why we keep doing this. Well, that's not true. I don't. <laughs> Wait, the, well, the good analogy that I, I kind of came up with is that politicians are kind of like dancing monkeys. And we say, dance, monkey, dance. And they dance the way we want them to. 
The problem is instead of throwing a couple of bucks into an empty hat, we give them control of cities or countries. <laughs> yeah. Right? So yeah. that's, it's kind of just as much our fault that the politicians are the way they are yeah, as it is theirs. Yeah. So. And I mean, it's because like they've also made it so that it's hard for us to, yeah. to like, well, it's that whole illusion of choice, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, right. so that's illusion of choice. You no, know, and that's actually a really good I, You've that's actually put that really succinctly, too, is that, yeah, the the political world is basically the buffer from the between the poor and the rich. They keep us a, a, away from each other. Yeah, I never, like... That's actually... I, I just, like, yeah. thought about it that way and, like, put it that way just because yeah. of the way that we were talking, but it is true. Like, they're, they're like the protection... Literally, they have armies that if the rich wanted to, yeah. they could use the law to protect themselves. Yeah. Yeah, and in equating that to old kings and queens, that's almost exactly what it it's is. It's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's so, a so series of have, bureaucracy to keep. So we have uh, and like uh, anonymous kings and queens, and that's the issue. You can't point a finger necessarily. Yeah. And if you do, they they already found a way of how to like silence your finger. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, or if you if you do catch them doing something, it's like ah no, but really look look over here though. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what's Russia doing? What's going on in Brazil? Yeah. Did you hear about that Suez Canal thing? Like, isn't yeah. that like whoa whoa whoa? Don't change the subject. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, and every time we put our trust in them, it's, uh, well, Joe Rogan actually made a really good analogy on that one. It's like every time we try to trust people in power, it's just like Charlie Brown going to kick at football, and Lucy pulls it away from him at the last second every fucking time. <laughs> and there we are, on our ass, like yeah. we thought it was going to work out this time, and it never does. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's the tricky part, but I yeah. feel like, I don't know, if, if somehow we were able to unify consciousness enough, and be able to embody that through wisdom. Yeah. Then that's actually yeah. another Elon Musk project is Neuralink. Uh -huh. Instead of having cumbersome conversation, we can basically beam our direct thoughts into each other's minds, mm. which you know mm. has a lot of problems with it. Just, just like on the well, surface, but okay, at this. Do you know about the story of the Lemurians? No, I don't think I do. So the Lemurians came before the Atlanteans. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's an interesting story. The name sounds familiar, but I don't, yeah, I don't really know anything yeah, about Yeah, Lemuria. Them. Lemuria was before Atlantis. Um, oh, okay. And so the story goes, and I like this story because it kind of helps put things into perspective and like um, how we function as beings and our thoughts and our autonomy. Yeah. Um, so apparently the story goes that we were created as a slave race from aliens or interdimensional beings um, as a means to mine for gold here on earth but then there was a point where humans became conscious enough that they wanted their own autonomy and so we were given our own autonomy um, and back then there was enough wisdom still with us that we lived in complete harmony with earth to the extent that we they, they say that they achieved immortality in Lemuria. And then uh, Atlantis was like a, another city that was created after. And they were doing a scientific experiment, experiment through sacred geometry and Merkaba science. Um, and uh, and they, were, they were working with portals. This is how the story goes, right? So I'm just... Uh, um, and, and one portal was open and uh, a warrior species from Mars that had extinguished themselves through war and like completely eradicated life, almost eradicated completely life in their planet, came through that portal. And at that point, before they came through the portal, Lemurians were able to communicate like what you just said by projecting just our thoughts into each other's minds without technology, apparently. That this is how, how we function. Yeah. 
Well, to a degree, I mean, we kind of almost have that. I mean, not to the direct point of like full on thought, but yeah. you know when someone's looking at you. So, so the interesting thing is that when that species came through that portal and they were focused on conquering, you know, power, they, they were also able to tap into that, but they started to put thoughts into each other's minds that were not beneficial to their own life and so we start to lose our ability to do that through people doing it yeah. or like you know like so so that's what's interesting about like when you bring that up it's like yeah there's a lot of things that go along with that like if you're able to project thoughts into someone what's not what's to say that that's going to be necessarily a positive experience for that person yeah you know and how how else could you like fuck with someone's mind when you're like in their yeah. head yeah right? well for sure well not only so, that i mean how often does your mind wander yeah when you're halfway through a thought and you think about something else like dude what the fuck are you talking about yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> so it would just be because we're not at that spiritually evolved place where like our thoughts can you know be pure enough and like aware enough that we are able to communicate harmoniously through just our thoughts it would be like chaos in a sense like yeah, yeah well and it, like anything it, when it's new it would be difficult yeah, yeah, yeah but i think once we had neural link or augmented tele- telepathy like mechanically augmented telepathy or whatever you want to call it sort of thing like that mm-hmm. it would be probably hugely beneficial because yeah like you 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 would have full intention of what you meant mm-hmm. come across the way you intended it mm-hmm. I can also see, yeah, the pitfalls of, you know, hacking people's brains yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the, the Go- scary part. Yeah. Ghost in the Shell was a great example of that. <laughs> yeah. But at the same token, though, too, I mean, there's there's a huge benefit to it. But you think, yes, like we're emotionally, societally not, not there ready. Yet. We're not ready for that. For sure. And, yeah, there'll be tons of unforeseen problems what if it does happen or when it happens Yeah, kind of thing, too. But, again, I mean, that's the whole idea of, of humans moving forward is that we have to do it together anyway yeah well right. yeah so, yeah because we have to be able to connect our thoughts definitely yeah. i see that part yeah definitely yeah for sure and that's that's hugely beneficial for lots of stuff because it's i know it's going to be one of those things or it's it's going to be tough to get to that point but i think that i think it'll be it'll be as good as it can be mm-hmm. as fast as it can be mm-hmm. because human nature always slows things down and sometimes it's because people have to go against the grain. Yeah. Right. So it'll be that its own thing, but I Um, mean, I hope we get there. Yeah. (laughs) I think, uh, it's a time, good time to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, we're two, two forty five in at least anyways. So yeah. 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 Gotta go to the bathroom. (laughs) Yeah. And also, yeah. Gotta, go do some other stuff for sure for sure man it's been great man yeah this has been really really, good i really enjoyed all of it and i'm glad we caught it on camera yeah for sure it's well it's a thing too it's just like i kind of go to the bathroom too but it's like fuck i have like another hour worth of conversation i could get into but yeah we can we can can do it again time yeah for sure man like i love all the insights all all awesome yeah because i definitely saw things you know in ways that have helped me create greater, greater clarity. Um, yeah. yeah, so I, I'm really glad. I'm really grateful for this conversation. For sure, man. Me too. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we're calling it. Okay. <laughs>